Hello and welcome to Les Odrants. This is Season 2, Episode 3. Uh, I am Dan, and as always, I'm joined by Ben, James and Fliss. Say hello. Hello. Hello, hello. 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 Right, I <laughs> would like to make a slight change to our normal operating model here, and I would like to start by singling out some listeners who've been in touch um, I have a number of listeners that I would like to tell to fuck off. Uh, so, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe a bit harsh. Uh, let's start with Steve, the one-star review guy. Um, Steve, uh, if that is indeed your real name, Steve. Uh, Steve got in. T- <laughs> yeah, Steve got in touch. Steve left us a review, and Steve said something like. <laughs> <laughs> which is basically how it sounded to me. Uh, it was a one-star review, and he said, what's the effect of, I normally love these guys, but then they all basically butt-fucked Eugene's perfume and, and shilled for him. Um, I want to say, for the record, I have never shilled for anyone, and certainly not for bloody Eugene, whom... By the way, I don't even know. He's not even my mate, right? He's sort of James's mate, acquaintance. I don't think the rest of us even know him. The idea that I would shill for him is absurd. And and we've been reasonably, I say reasonably, we've been completely honest and transparent about all three of his perfumes. It is possible, Steve, for four of us to like a perfume. I know that comes as a big shock to you, but it is possible. Um... So, yeah, Steve, if you're out there, if you're still listening, please fuck off. Um, yeah, if anyone. You're, if you're still listening, stop it. No, I, 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 all I will say. Stop right, listening immediately. Well, well, I, like I say, I wouldn't even go that, that strong. I did do a little uh, Instagram story just kind of relating to this, but it was just to give some feedback because people are entitled to their opinions. And I like that we're getting positive and negative feedback. But when it's when it's like completely, you know, a bit off the fucking reservation like that, and it's bollocks, you go, well, you know, I need to defend myself. But I, all I will say, right, I'm not even going to say anything about Steve, you know, wh- whatever. Um, all it is, Steve, you're missing out on a great perfume, mate. That's mm. that. You know what I mean? Like if if you were previously like, oh, respected our opinions, or found us entertaining, or liked what we had to say, or whatever, then. <laughs> Just kind of carry that over into thinking. Mm. He, he clearly, this is somebody who I, I think, and again, I'm reading between the lines here, that he has a problem with Eugene, or mm. you know, a problem with with Eugene having a brand or having some success, or people actually liking what he's done. Um, it is, like I say, it's entirely possible that he got a master perfumer in, uh, you know, Antoine Lee, and did everything right as far as what you could do to make a brand. Um, and they just, you know, we just went, yeah, it's really good. You know, even if I fucking yeah. hated the guy, I would still say that he, he like, his brand is great. Um, I have I to don't. agree. So, yeah. You know. I, because somebody actually, one of the, uh, another listener got in touch with me, uh, DM me, and uh, she said, what is going on with the, the Eugene stuff? Are his perfumes really that good? Because everybody's going nuts about them, including you guys. And I went, to be fair, they're that good. And I sent her the what I had left of the samples from our uh, our episode. And mm. I sent them to her and she got back to me and she went, oh no, they are really good, aren't they? I was like, yeah, babe, they're great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, sometimes someone's just really actually done a really fantastic uh, job. And yeah, I just, yeah, the echo chamber exists happened. for a reason yeah. because yeah. there's people, you know, everybody either just going, oh yeah, and like cooing about it. One, because they're trying to, like, butter Eugene up to get free shit off him, right? Which is a lot of, like, what you see on Instagram. People going, oh, yeah, I'd really love to try these and stuff I've like got that. To get my, I've got to get my nose on this. Yeah, my nose on that. Yeah, yeah. and, like, you know, that yeah. kind of dry bagging sort of attitude. And just people, so, so I'm glad it's getting hype. I'm glad people are yeah. talking about it because yeah. they're worth fucking talking about. So, and uh, uh, just know. as well, just to be really honest as well, I've been really hyping Belém um, on my Insta and also to friends and stuff. I bought my bottle. Thanks, Eugene. It's gorgeous. Um, mm. But I, I paid I paid money for it. My own yeah, money. yeah. I, 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 I didn't even like Belém. I didn't even like Belém that much. I think the thing is as well is like when we started the podcast, like we sort of some discussed some like rough kind of like core tenets. Do you know what I mean? And being like on like ruthlessly honest, no matter what we think, was one of the 
main things that we all kind of said right from the very start. It was like, we're not going to be shilling and, you know, we're going to be honest and, you know, transparent and that's going to be that. I, th- so. I think if 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 this Steve uh, had listened to well no it was the same episode where we did Strange Love I think wasn't it because um, I yeah. mean you know we were we were all resoundingly unpleasant about at least one perfume in that range in Fliss's case pretty well all of them I think <laughs> uh, and 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 to be honest if I was going to shill for anyone it'd be for those guys so. Uh, you know, it, mm. it's not happening. And Steve, you know, you heard a nice balanced uh, uh, sort of assessment there from from James and from Fliss and from Ben, but from me, and, and I, <laughs> I do mean this, like from the bottom of my cold, dead heart, fuck you. Okay, good. Right, so uh, introductory remarks out of the way. What else has been going on? Daniel Safarian Spies. Apologies <laughs> if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Actually, I don't care if I'm pronouncing it wrong. You, sir... Uh, are extremely rude. Um, I mean, I sort of like the fact that you're rude, but I don't really understand your point. Daniel showed up on our Instagram to say something like, ha, 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 what a funny piece of shit all of this is. Ha, ha, you lot don't know anything about perfume, but keep making the episodes because I like it and it's funny, ha, ha, ha. Um, Daniel, we don't know what you're talking about. You sound like the kind of person I never want to meet, but thanks for tuning in. Um, Right, (laughs) anyone else got anything good to say? Sorry, I'm, um, I'm like being super negative to start. And no, perhaps no, no, I don't take no. criticism well. You know, maybe, well, maybe I'm just being really thin skinned. Um, I would like to say, um, you know, thanks very much for your positive reviews. If you'd like to leave a review, you can do so. <laughs> <laughs> On your app. <laughs> to all the listeners who really enjoy us, just yeah. please leave a nice review. Oh, God. <laughs> Either that or bear the ire of Dan. Like, and that's not, I'm not throwing down the gauntlet. Or if you're gonna give if you're gonna give us a negative review, then at least give us a negative review for a decent reason. Something that we can go, yeah, good point. You know, Ben's one a star, cunt. they swear loads and Ben's a cunt. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to argue with that one. Well, it, it is. It is very difficult to argue with it. Uh, no, can I can I just read out what yeah, he actually yeah, said? Because because uh, honestly, I, I I don't even really understand it. Um, it says such another piece of hilarious shit. I love you guys for the sake of entertainment, but to be honest, you know p about fragrance. I started listening, got your part about musk about nothing. Shit, you can't blame people for thinking you troll for Ifra. What? We troll for Ifra. Mate, have you listened to this podcast or are you just vomiting up word salad? I mean, it's just fucking gibberish. Uh, There exists like two kinds of natural musk, killing a small deer or shaving a ram. Other than that, Ambre is brilliant. Is that what we said? I mean, did anyone say that? Uh, Is that even true? (laughs) Of course we didn't say that. Uh, Um, Unserious, but entertaining nonetheless. So, unserious... Uh, Daniel, look, thanks. Uh, we we do genuinely appreciate your your feedback, but um, y- y- you know, fuck knows what you're talking about. So, I, 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 I mean, in in fairness, I think that is a translation issue because it's probably English probably isn't his first language. However, um, <laughs> really not. <laughs> well, it's well, it clearly isn't because it's it's One pretty would so. incoherent. Kind of like what the fuck are you talking about, mate? But if we if we extrapolate, we we sort of take from that what you're saying there that we did say that. I don't recall saying oh, there's two like sources of musk. I think we talked about like the different like specific um, uh, like musk. I, I think we were quite again if something's poorly researched or we don't like say you know we we don't claim to be experts on perfume either. This is. 90% fucking opinion with a little bit of oh let's look it up occasionally thrown in right we we're, we're not we're not pretending that we're fucking you know uh, like a tr- uh, hopefully there is a degree of education uh, like that com- comes through from some of it but like I say the, it, it, it's it's not I, I think when we had the discussion about the musks most of it was synthetic musk because they're most of what is used in perfumery right and we talked about I know that I d- I'm sh- pretty sure I didn't say anything that was wrong, but if I did, then fine. And I, I kind of cite that there's loads of people who are in the industry who are either, you know, um, indie perfumers or different people who listen to this podcast who've never pulled up pretty much anything that I've said, right? 
because oh, they're like, all yeah. oh, right, okay, it's it's pretty accurate. Or if it's down to opinion, like I've used this and I think it, you know, has this effect or whatever, I always qualify it with that. And I think we all do. We all qualify what we say as, yes, there could be more uh, more to this than meets the eye. And unless somebody comes in, and I would even invite people, I don't want to be invited any old twat on, but like people to mm. maybe record a fucking voice message or just like explain what you mean. And we, we yeah. might even discuss, might even be a point of discussion, you know, or somebody says, or somebody says what you said there was completely inaccurate and here's why. And if they're not like just, dickheads giving fucking stupid opinions that are bollocks then we will address it but if they if they're just like i don't agree with that and especially the ifra stuff that just makes me think he's fucking mental right yeah sorry i i, um, I, I don't i don't really understand how anyone could have got from this that we're shilling for ifra for god's sake i mean yeah is that what he means by trolling for ifra i think does he mean shilling uh, I, mean shilling? I, I think I, that was what i thought he meant i'm anyway, so I, sick of the fucking ifra conversation people think that i'm this apologist for ifra i couldn't think of a more boring fucking conversation to talk about than ifra right which but, which yeah, Perhaps well, we should have this... talked more about shaving rams because I don't remember doing that. <laughs> I, I I once entered a ram shaving competition. I I once I I, I was runner up in the no I made that up. I completely. I was going to say it. like. <laughs> You, you look genuinely baffled there for a second, though, which, <laughs> which was the intended effect. Okay, so so. Am I the we... only person here that actually has shaved a ram? Shaved... Yeah. Yes. Are you for I real? Possibly, you might be. Yeah. Darling. She's oh a farm yeah. Girl. yeah. Farm girl. Farm girl. Ram ram shaver. That's I mean, what it, we're it, gonna have to call it was, you. Now. It wasn't. I would. I would say it probably wasn't a ram. It was. It was a a young sheep. Um, but you know, close enough for jazz, eh, boys? Did it smell did musky? It, That's the important. Did it smell like perfume? They they do smell very musky because they're, oh. they're so full of lanolin. So there's yeah, a quite right. fatty yeah. musky smell to them. Oh, yeah, lovely. It's, and well, it stays on your hands for a very long time. It's really so, hard to wash off. So wow. so hopefully, I mean, if people haven't tuned out already, uh, hopefully. <laughs> People, hopefully people will know that I'm not being entirely serious when I uh, sort of um, call this stuff out and say it gets to me. It, it really doesn't. I, I couldn't really care less. Um, the one serious-ish point, though, is, um, I mean, well, I guess the one major point that hopefully we've addressed is that, you know, there's just no shilling. It, it doesn't happen here. There's no kind of, hey, we're all friends, so let's shill for each other's brand. And, and, and in fact, people will hopefully know uh, that I have my own brand, which I studiously try and avoid mentioning at all, lest mm. people fucking think that I'm, you know, just using it as a platform for self promotion. So, so I think you know that is a misread. Um, and 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 just to to I guess the second semi serious point here is that at no point have I ever claimed to be an authority on perfume. What I am is a guy who collects a lot of perfume, who has tried thousands of them, and who has a modest vocabulary to describe some of it, and is interested in learning more. So, look, if what you were expecting when you tuned in was, you know, Dominique Ropion and Bertrand Duchefort pontificating about the finer fucking details of, of you know, perfume uh, uh, making, then, uh, no, sorry, wrong place. If what you were hoping for was four charming but not terribly well informed people talking shit on a voyage of discovery then you know hopefully you're more in the right space so uh so yeah those are my responses to all of that shit um shall we get on with the actual show um Ooh, i've got one more correction oh really yeah, More corrections. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it's a nice one though. Amanda Beadle got in touch um, after last episode, and she oh said yeah, she to tell you again that you're still her favourite. Oh yeah, well that too, but I wasn't going to mention was it. Was that the correction? Um, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know that you are still, still my favourite. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was regarding the Art and Olfaction Award. She didn't beat Christoph Laudemel. She um, they were joint first place. Well, I think um, that's a lovely correction, but it's not and I don't as romantic. Think I, was, I, was, I, was, I was a bit like, yeah, it's still fucking good, though, isn't it, babe? Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it, not really. Yeah, still, it's still not great. bad. Still <laughs> yeah. not bad. Anyway, how, how many but, yeah. people were entered in the competition? Two. Uh, thousands. No, thousands. <laughs> of course, yeah. thousands. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> ridiculous. So, um, so look, uh, I, I want to just uh, talk about something else, uh, perhaps more positive, uh, which is that I spent a few days in Paris this week. Uh, took the family, uh, went off to Paris, had a wonderful time. 
um, went to visit the Dior Museum and the Dior Boutique. And, um, oh, my God, if, if there is one thing you must do when you go to Paris, trust me, it is to go to the Dior Museum. It is incredible. Um, it's just kind of three enormous floors of immaculately laid out couture and, and perfume and stuff. Um, and it's just amazing. Um, but in the Dior boutique, uh, a couple of things caught my eye. Um, and I wanted to mention a few things because because one of them uh, one of them is a correction on my previous uh uh olfactory experience one of them is a correction on something that i've been going around telling everyone is a fact but is not and one of them is just me bragging about something that i bought so okay. <laughs> uh, let's see if you can guess which is which the right. holy the holy trinity it's like the christmas quiz all over again isn't <laughs> yeah, it yeah, yeah yeah so first up um oh noir I think I owe someone round here an apology. I tried what I take to be the new version of Eau Noir, and it was stupendous. Um, really, really kind of spicy uh, lavender, and and not so much of that curry, but like a pronounced coffee. Uh, that that curry. Smell, what did you say? Having so- a curry and a pissed soaked alleyway I, mean, I, think, I think it was i think it was house it was having coffee uh out, outside a, a curry house where the sort of water a curry water runoff or something was <laughs> in the alley i don't know but but honestly um the curry note seems to have been dialed right down or, or perhaps that was just you know my experience is different this time uh but my goodness what a perfume and and you are quite right about that uh you know i'm gonna go ahead and assume that this is the more modern version and that it is deliberately uh a bit more was accessible it was it was the was the, was the no was it was green? green it was green that's the original is it the modern one is not green yeah oh wow yeah. uh okay well then um uh, in fact i've got a photo of the layout so i might go back and just double double triple check that in the background um but uh whatever it was i certainly appreciated it a lot more this time round um the correction on something that i've been going around telling everyone is a fact um i think we discussed um Oud Ispahan as being their number one seller of that range. And I asked the uh, Dior Boutique uh, uh, assistant, and she was like, oh, no, 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 not at all. She said, um, what she said was, um, Boise d'Argent is uh, the best seller in France by yeah. some way. Mm-hmm. And then outside of France, it's Ambre Nuit is, is yeah. their best seller from that line. For some reason, I had it in my head that Oud Isfahan was their, their number one uh, seller. I think Oud Isfahan gets the hype on a lot of the groups, but I can, I, I can imagine that the other two are, I don't want to say more muggle-based, but they're muggle easier based. wear. They're certainly they? easier. Oh, they're definitely yeah. easier. Uh, I would have thought Vanilla Diorama will be up there as well as like a muggle favourite. Um, right. Because it's very easy to wear, very simple in its construction as well. And yeah. it's, you know, slightly gourmandy, which... You know that's a bit of a muggle bait, isn't it? Like, muggle and it's bait. nice, and it's nice. Uh, but... It's muggle bait. Uh, oh, I'm looking at this. Yeah, no, O Noir was orange. Oh, that is the new one. That then. is yeah. the new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, it sounds interesting from what you're saying, though, because it doesn't surprise me entirely that they would have toned down that curry note. Because I think yeah. that's the bit that was obviously divisive in it. You know, that was yeah. The bit that... I, I would Through agree. Everyone, so. I would agree entirely. Um, okay, and and then the last one was just a, a sort of little brag, um, but I posted it on my Instagram today. But I, they had uh, two hundred and fifty mil bottles of uh, the Vetiva, uh, which uh, is um, uh, absolutely just fucking spectacular. And, and I don't like. I tried this years and years ago and was a little bit underwhelmed, given uh, how sort of uh, highly regarded it is. But um, I just sprayed it and I was like, yeah, no, I, I I have to have this. And perhaps it's the kind of the, the rarity of it or whatever, but just amazing vetiver coffee sort of thing. And and that's that's my uh, Paris trip for you in perfume. I, th- I think some some fragrances are a bit like that. It's not like, it's not that like FOMO thing of, oh, well, now it's discontinued. It was like, it probably was good anyway, but when... When it is a little bit more like forbidden fruit, it's not even like you're jumping on a bandwagon. It's like 
you're revisiting something and then going, oh, well, actually, it is really good. Mm. Um, so I think, like, there's a lot to be said for, for doing that. Mm. Um, and getting something that's you know a little bit a little bit special. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like. I always don't. liked it, but you know, I don't think I'd go out my way. But maybe I'd try it now and go. Oh, yeah, if I was in mm. Paris and that was the situation, then I probably would get it. Where well, Where else did you go then? Like sh- shopping wise, like perfume. Oh, so we or? we uh, no, we didn't. I didn't get to do much perfume shopping because we're you know we we're with the uh, kids and stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, we went round. Uh, I mean, we covered a lot of ground. So in 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 forty eight hours or so, we we walked forty two kilometers, uh, which is quite a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The ki- the kids, you know, pretty well put up with it. Um, we did uh, the Sacre Coeur, Montmartre. We did. Uh, the Eiffel Tower. We did um, Marais. Mm. Did you do uh, catacombs? No, no. no. Um, but we did a load of shopping as well. Um, and uh, for anyone who's into streetwear, as indeed my eldest daughter is, there's a shop called Citadium. Uh, and she walked into it. It's like four floors of streetwear. And she walked in, and her little face just sort of was like, "Oh my god!" I said, Are "You all right, Anna?" She said, "The." Uh, I think I found my people, Dad. Oh. <laughs> which uh, which was very sweet. So, Am I uh, being like, what is streetwear? Just like, um, uh, well, is that like uh, so, supreme and all that kind of it, shit. It's sort of like, uh, I guess, uh, what you would have called skate brands. Yeah, uh, like that sort so of that, thing. That yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Um, but it's cool. it's not all skate brands. They had other stuff like the CP. They had Nike. They had you know, all sorts of things. They weirdly right. even had a Clark's concession because it turns out that Clark's outside the UK uh, are like a thing. I mean, mm-hmm. Clark's in the UK are just like school shoes. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, anyway, all right, they fuck got it. the game recently though. The old Clark's. Uh, I have to say, the old Clark's. Like Clark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Clark. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I, I, I can't say I've ever really considered it a great deal. I have a deal. lovely pair of black thigh-high boots that I got from Clark's. Wow. Uh, Do you wear those for shaving rams? Wouldn't that be a sight to see? I think there's a subset <laughs> a subset of our listenership who would pay good money for that. Uh, I think there's a subset of our fucking <laughs> podcasting committee ship who would pay good money for that. Um... That could be oh, yeah. uh, that could be on the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. Say, yeah, yeah, we'll do that yeah. later. Yeah. Fliss, fliss uh, in her FMBs. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, right, so I feel like uh, uh, this week's po- uh, podcast has started off in a slightly unusual direction with me getting belligerent about people saying nasty things, but you know, making a semi-serious point, <laughs> and then telling you all about my holiday. It doesn't really feel like a perfume. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, excuse it's me. It's been vaguely <clears throat> perfume related, hasn't it? Well, it has been vaguely perfume related. I say vaguely, um, I mean not really. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, saving uh, saving the full fourteen for kind of uh, our, our sort of, uh, I, I guess, our landing run on on part one. Um, ben, tell me all about your perfumery experiences of the last couple of weeks. Um, do you know what? I've been wearing a lot of stuff that we'll talk about later, but I've also been wearing some... Because uh, we, we're going to be talking about Amourage later, so I've been wearing we a lot are. of Amourage. Um, and do you know what? I've been wearing a fucking lot of Amourage figment. Which, man or figment woman? man. Figment man. Oh, interesting. So it's if it's a, a very like unusual Amourage, and it smells a lot like a damp forest floor when this you first spray it. It's just heavy, I think, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it's it um, reminds me a lot of Zora's sloth as well, but without the fruit. It's it's got that sort of like wet, rank, damp forest floor sort of vibe to it. Slightly tart as well. But you're Dan, you're looking selling, like you're not. I know, it to me. I know, I know. And you're looking at me like you'd hate it. But do you know what? I think you would like it. I, I'm out sure of I've all tried. Fr- out of you guys, I think you'd be the one that would like this most. Really? Uh, I'm sure yeah. I've tried yeah. myths, but, uh, uh, you know, maybe I haven't. Or I don't it remember is, enjoying fig, it. Figment, did you say? Oh, myths? it's Figment. Yeah. Uh, okay. Figment. Yeah. Well, figment what, I, I've written, what the fuck is this? It's so strange. It's like two different perfumes, a massive hit of Jossman in the first spray, and then some massive pretend flowers that are extremely honeyed. Reminds me of some zoology stuff. Zoologists. Yeah, stuff. yeah, I think Photo, it's so sharing a brain. Photorealistic wet earth, dewdrops in the morning, and then the honeyed pollen of a bee. And if I had 
yeah, if if I had to chance it, I would say it was a it was a zoologist, and I'd say it's. I don't think it's a, it's a wearable perfume, so it's no wonder you like it. Isn't that funny? <laughs> that it sits like in your, the weird shit yeah, section of my library. <laughs> sounds a bit like your review of uh, Sloth, I think. Yeah. That was kind of yeah. similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, 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 think, uh, I think Ben and Fliss are sharing a brain, and in yeah. fact <laughs> they, they have the identical read on this perfume. It says, it's a wonderful concoction of what people can do with aroma chemicals, sort of genius. I hate it. I, do you know, I love it. I think it's one of my favourite amouages. That's the funny really? thing. It, it's it's because of, the thing I like about it, and 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 I thought you were going to touch on it actually when you mentioned it being like two perfumes, is it has this weird duality in that it's quite mossy and wet and dank and damp, and and it's got that vibe to it. But it's also got this sort of like uplifting, bright freshness to it. That yeah, that's the pretend flowers. Skates underneath, <laughs> and it. <laughs> Yeah, but I like it. I, I, just, I really do I like it. Them. I mean, it, it is uh, it is un- undeniably like a hugely synthetic bomb. But um, you know, there's nothing about it that smells like nature, really. I mean, I, I'm describing it as a forest floor, but it doesn't really smell very natural at the same time. It's no. got a zing and a zip to it that kind of takes it away from anything natural. Um, even you know, even if it is a natural thing, it just doesn't particularly smell that way. But I like it. I love it a lot. It, it's it's almost got like an ozonic kind of yeah. uh, like CFC sort of smell to it. It's very strange. Um, but I like it. And, and but you also mentioned myths, which is the other one I've been wearing that I'm allowed to talk about. Mm. It's Amwar's Myth to, Man again. You're allowed though. to talk um, about whatever you want, my friend. Well, so the others we'll be talking about later. Oh, okay. So uh, we'll come back to that. But yeah, no, Amouage Miss Man, which is the other one I've been wearing, and I fucking love Miss Man. I've only got a sample of it, and um, is it discontinued or not? Because I th- I've, I I've read somewhere that it's discontinued and it, it does crop up now and then at like exorbitant prices second hand. I, would, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those amouage uh, are going to be discontinued because they've got fucking loads of them and it's like mm. they're still in production. It's like, wow, like all those Christopher Chong ones, all those kind of ones going back. I mean, yeah, the popular older ones, but there's a Ooh. lot and they're still going like Journey and the blah, blah, blah. They're, they're all, st- as far as I know, they're still making them. So they've got to start. I mean, yeah, they've they've got to like discontinue some soon. I would have thought. What's that you're sniffing, Fliss? Is that this myth? is your this is your figment? Ugh. Oh, it's lovely. No, it, it's just like it's really synthetic geosmin mm. wet earth, but it's not like wet earth, like an uh, uplifting uh, Annie Gutal sort of wet earth. It's just bottom of the cave. Yeah. Dank. Oh. Yeah, myths. you've got to give it a couple of minutes and it will calm down and you'll get that brightness come out that gives oh, it a bit yeah, of Oh, yeah, those nice in. flowers. So, so yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember I can't remember myths, but I, I, I'm just having a quick look at what, what this reminds people of. Uh, and, and first up is Amouage Tribute, which I did actually have at one point, which is a Attar, which is very nice. Um, uh, Oud 7 by Mattia Premier, which I've also tried, which I liked. Strangely... There's one vote for Les Abstray, Les Abstray, De Sandra. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I, I don't know about that. Um, Joe Miss, to me, reminds me a little bit of um, Interlude, but more floral, like a more floral version of Interlude. But it's hmm. got a very similar base. It's got, I mean, a lot of our margins have that kind of similar, like a Poponac resinous kind of velvety hmm. sort of incense thing going on, don't they? And it, but it, it, it reminds, I don't know, it just reminds me a lot of Interlude, but with a, a sort of more floral heart to it. Um, and it's really nice. I really Ooh. like it. Um, it's, it's, it's the both, I think both of those, like the Figment and Miss, are not sort of big Amouage heavy hitters. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're lesser, lesser walked, but I really like both of them. I think so. Obviously, Figment hasn't gone down very well with Fliss, but uh, Figment but Woman, no, I, I, like I love it. it's beautiful and it's nothing like Figment Man at all. Well, we'll come to a bit of that later, I think. The chatter yeah. between like how the man and the women's are not at all <laughs> related, related but, um, because Figment Woman is just it's just an incredibly stunning, bright, floral, clean, soapy, just reeks of money, it just reeks of someone. When I wear it, I feel like I should be sitting on, I don't know, a terrace at Lake Como when somebody should be bringing me lunch. You know, mm. that kind of... Uh, in a crisp white shirt, no kids, with jam it's on their fingers. man, it feels like <laughs> yeah, she's rolling exactly around in the forest. Like, <laughs> like a sloppy pig just rolling around in a little Or maybe, or maybe, maybe Figment Man's the gardener. 
Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it, to be honest, as for me. Um, okay. I've been wearing a lot of underwear. It's all got a bit lady chatterly, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Dan's taking his glasses off. I, 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 I don't even understand anymore. I feel like I feel like you lost me at the concept of not having kids, so uh, you know, that, yes. that, that, that was... Uh, that, that, that was unfair of you. Um, okay, so that sounds like a good selection of uh, amouages. Uh, for Liss, uh, amouage, amouages that we're re- reviewing, notwithstanding, what else have you been wearing? Um, I had a massive tuber rose fest. Basically, I know oh, oh, you're no. hate Actually, it. No, 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 no. Uh, we have to do a tuberose episode uh, because I can't. Yeah. What was the perfume that I enjoyed that had a tuberose note in it? And then I was like, oh, maybe I don't Des hate tuberose. Sandres. Oh, it is Desandres, is it? All right, okay. Mm. I, uh, yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> I can mention it again, lest uh, you know. Yeah, Steve, Steve will be on your back. <laughs> lest one star Steve gets in touch to to. You know, tell us about how fucking shilly I am. Just tick um, off the contractual fulfilment. Yeah, we've t- we've mentioned it for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should. Sorry, yes, we've done it now. Um, excellent. Right, so that's that's sorted. Um, yes, it's Tuberose Fest. Sorry, Fliss. Uh, that's okay. I, um, so brain yeah, got basically, away. I was having a massive clear out because I've I purchased from Eugene the Bel and I've got to pay for it somehow. <laughs> So I was selling a load of stuff in order to pay for it. And and the stuff I was putting on Insta was all tuberose, because I've got more tuberose than anything else. Uh, Madonna Truth and Dare, which I still uh, stand by as the best celebrity frag of all time. Um, and then also uh, Miller Harris Tuberosa. Um, and I, I was barbling on about tuberose. And lovely Nick Nestros sent me a tuberose care package. And... <laughs> Always dangerous. Always dangerous. Always. Oh my God, so dangerous. Um, and also Thomas East as well sent me some lovely uh, tuberos too. And so basically, um, I ended up. Can we just have a little Thomas East appreciation moment? Oh, I really like yeah. Thomas East. He's he's lovely. He posts on Instagram as the sentiest. Um, oh, is that the sentiest? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the I didn't realise. I, I only know him from the groups. Yeah, yeah there well, you there you go. go. Mm, uh, a little Thomas East, the sentiest appreciation moment. Good lad. Yeah. Hurrah. Anyway, um, sorry. So anyway, so I was doing, there's a trilogy by Histoire de Parfum and mm-hmm. they do a, a tuberose tri- trilogy. And the first one um, is called La Capricieuse. And, oh God, I don't know what it is about me and Oris at the moment, but I'm just wallowing in Oris perfumes. And this is oh, like yeah. tuberose and uh, Do you think, Oris, I'm and it's sorry, just, sorry, sorry yeah? to interrupt you, Fliss. Uh, but I've been wearing a lot of vetiver recently, and I don't tend to go for ooh a single sort of thing. Do you think maybe there's something in the changing of the seasons is kind of guiding your your selection? You know, why is it that you get? When you said change, tube- I thought you meant <laughs> something about the change because <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm getting on a bit. <laughs> You know, yeah. I've left. I've left my giddy uh, tuberose days, and I'm right. I'm I'm settling into I Oris as an old I'm, lady. I think I'm going to have to contact HR about this. Um, no. I, 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 I may have put my foot in it. Um, no, 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 no. No, um, are, are the change in the weather, darling, not the change. <laughs> um, um, I don't know because um, I think for me, Oris is about being really comforted, and I find it very the the. the the orises that I've been wearing have been very, that's a very waxy oris end, the buttery end. Um, and I just think I'm deriding a lot of comfort from it at the moment. Um, Fair enough. There, there's, yeah, there's, there's nothing specifically just, motivating your oris nothing fixation. Nothing specifically motivating me. No, I'm, and I think, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really enjoying it. And um, so this uh, Le Capricieux is the least tuberosy of the triplet it's very clean but it's it's got it's quite leathery and it's got that oris fattiness that i was talking about but mm-hmm. it's also powdery and it's got a lovely heliotrope top and i just i really enjoyed it and it reminded me of noir de tuberose by miller harris which is mm. much nuttier and i nearly bought a partial of that recently and i'm so glad i didn't because this uh the histoires de parfum 
uh, is so much better. It's It's got the same kind of basic structure, but it's just got a lot more to it. And it feels, there's iris and cocoa, which has that bellamy feel to it, and also slightly melt more hearty as well. Um, but there's a brightness to it, and it feels... Like it's much more like a daytimey wear, and it's different enough to stand on its own. And uh, Thomas sent me fifteen mil to uh, wow. after I'd said that I couldn't get enough of Nick's uh, decant that he sent me. So that was lovely of him. And then I wore the second one, which is called Virginal, and I, this is my least favourite one of the three. You'd hate it, Dan. It's really, really bubblegummy <laughs> and fruity, and it's fun. It's over. I think it's too sweet. There's no, there's none of that snapped green stems you get with a lot of tuberoses. It's very pink. It's almost so, rosy. So, just so not- just on, on that, you, you already are using way more words to describe tuberose than I ever have or could i just associate it with that sort of sickly sweet bubble gummy sort of vibe oh, no, but that, there's loads of green tube roses that are this, like crunchy yeah. snapped stems like carnal flower by frederick mal that is that is super green opening and it's that stemmy yeah. side of it that i yeah. struggle with sometimes oh um, the greenness because yeah. this is the other trouble with yeah. it dan is it's got that mm. bubble gumness to it but it's also they can also wear very green which is another thing that you don't enjoy very much yeah I'll, I'll, <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I have. I certainly have my limits on on greenness. Um, mm. I, if yeah, I mean anyone who listened to me would probably just conclude I don't really like perfume. I imagine <laughs> so, I don't think, like green stuff. Don't like tuberose. Uh, I, I, th- I, th- I think as uh, uh, t- tuberose is an interesting one. Like I think you said in the last episode to have a full episode about it. Mm. One because like uh, I think with the exception of Fliss, I think all of us are kind of like not. That big a fan of it, but also anytime I've ever got uh, tuberose um, materials, they're vastly different, um, and that is true of the perfumes that they, that kind of bubblegummy sort of association or very indolic white floral sort of fleshy yeah. kind of waxy it's the feel. white it's the white florals those heavy indolic waxy ones that's the ones i love the really yeah. rounded diffusive fleshy but, uh petally th- this feel. is why i want to get i want to get some materials now i do have somewhere but i don't know if i've got enough so we might we might get some materials from somewhere but we'll we won't talk about that <laughs> we'll talk about that off off air um, no, but we might get like some materials at some point where we can compare like five different, <coughs> excuse me, like five different like tuberoses, for example, from different extractions. So I've got mm. one from uh, Enflorage, right, which is obviously you know where they take the um, uh, the fat or or whatever and they uh, put the petals in it and it the the stuff the juice comes out of them into their all these technical terms uh comes out into the um mm-hmm. into the stuff you don't know very much of. about perfume do you um, i think steven's i know right. i just i think he is right um one star but, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway anyway so the enflorage is so subtle it's mm. uh, but it's stunning right and i'm like this is like tuberose. What? What is this? And it, it probably. But when it's like that, it, that it, you it, you get that kind of almost cloud like softness to the edges of a perfume when when it's that type of tuberose. You don't get that. Do you know what I mean? It's it's almost. It is. It rounds off the top of a floral in the same way as as an ambrox would round down the base. Does sure. that make sense? So my, so my issue with using it, I'll just say my my only mm. issue with using it is one. It's really fucking expensive. <laughs> Two, unless you know what you're doing, but we, unless you have previous experience, right? It is so subtle and so light that it'll just get lost, right? Mm. And you think, oh no, a two bre- like another oil or jasmine absolute or something of a similar ilk. No way that would get lost. That's like a really powerful material that basically like dictates the kind of direction of a perfume but with this enflorage one is so subtle that it you really have to know what you're doing with it to get the best out of it and i don't <laughs> that's the mm. yeah you know. okay well I, I mean we're risking doing an entire tube rose episode here i think we yeah, definitely yeah, need yeah. to do a tube rose episode just because it, it it's um you know to to uh oh, whatever he's called i've forgotten his name anyway the guy on instagram uh daniel <laughs> No, he's got the same name as me. Daniel Safarian 
telling us how little we know. In fairness, I don't know a shit lot about Tuberos at all. So um, yeah, it would be uh, wouldn't it'd be, it good be great to, to convert Dan into their massive Tuberos fan? I'd love like, to just do that through, through this. I, I, might I don't. It might. I mean, I don't. I don't sort of. Uh, I, I don't sort of completely deny the possibility of it but i'm gonna go ahead and say it's unlikely um Mm -hmm. so anyway uh fliss what else apart from your iris oris and your uh Um, uh, i was just saying the the hdp tuberose to the virginal Mm. i found it it was a bit chatty it wasn't cool chatty yeah do you know what what i mean by that when a girl you know a lot of tuberose perfumes, like things like Fracas and Truth and Dare, are very, very grown up. They're kind of femme fatale kind of feel. Whereas this one, it felt like a chatty young girl. She just wasn't cool. Do you know what I mean? It had just felt like it was very too, too fizzy for me. Um, then tuberose three, which is the animal. Oh my god i had it like a hundred years ago and i sold it i don't know what i think i was doing because it's bloody gorgeous and it's not a massive massive floral there's a big dollop of incense and it's slightly 80s head shoppy incense ever so slightly um but it's honeyed and toasted and boozy and it's there's a really sort of almost dirty gourmand feel to it there's leather in the dry down and it's made fuzzy by this tuberose note and it's really complex and i'm loving it and loving it i really am yeah that surprised me um but the big, big hit was, oh, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. I'm really grumpy about it. It's Roger, Roger, Roger. 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 It's Just Roger. Roger. Roger Dove. Um, tuberose. Uh, Nick sent me, like, a fuck ton, and I... Is that um, an official metric? I mean, it's an official metric, and I just can't get enough of it. Really? And I'm really gutted because it's like the most expensive, and it's really hard to get hold of as well, apparently. But it's it's all of my favourite tuberoses, classier and just a bit. So it's it feels like truth or dare. It feels as there's a green top like carnal flower, but where carnal flower gets really scratchy and slightly shrieky. This doesn't, it's just soft, 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 and it's blousy and and diffusive and it's creamy and it's, oh, it's really accomplished and gorgeous. He knows what he's uh, doing, that Roger Dove, doesn't he? Oh. Well, he, he certainly employs someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> um, if I had the money, this would be my signature uh, tuberose. I would like to just confirm that Fliss is available for shilling for Roger Parfums uh, should uh, a bottle of tuberose, whatever it is... Absolutely, be. and I don't... I make no bones about <laughs> it. I shamelessly, I, I will shill. I want this in my collection. I want a big, fat bottle of it. What, what is it called? Is it just called tuberose? Big, fat bottle. Tubero. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not tuberose extra... I, I don't recall it's just ever seeing... Oh, yeah. I'm not sure yeah, I've ever yeah. seen it. Tuberose pour femme, pour fin. Pour fin, yeah. pour fin. Pour fin. Uh, um, yeah, no, Nick said it wasn't very uh, widely available. Nag damn it. Well, it may, may, actually, it's probably good it's not widely available because if it was widely available, I'd have to sell a kid to buy it. Um, so at the moment, know, the kid's double win. Is safe. Double win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds Which like one? a good conversion Which to one? me. Mm, yeah, all of them. Sophie's choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two bottles. Two bottles. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent. Right. Anything else from you, Fliss, apart from no, your desire no, to no. sell I'm the just, kids? I'm still for... trying to sell. Yeah, no, I'll just sell the kids while you do your yeah. fifteen. Excellent. Fourteen. Un- unless oh, there's no, been 13. some 13 13 13 what I think so oh you're fucking absolutely messing with me surely well, there's 14 mm, and well, there are, and you're just going to skip over one of them well one of them's an amouage that, that we're going to talk about in a second okay fine part. but there are 14 so, you know oh, i yeah. don't need to start yeah, worrying worry, that i wouldn't i wouldn't do that to you <laughs> there's been some sort of weird celestial movement triggering a change in the number of days in each week well, I nearly uh, didn't do wear anything today, um, but I I put something on. Heretics. Because, 
Well, no, just because you didn't I've want been... Dan to have a meltdown. <laughs> well, yeah, because then that would have that would have been. He was already you know. angry. I mean, you don't want to make it I, worse. I, I, <laughs> well, I, I've been reflecting on it. I think maybe I opened the show a little bit angry. Um, <laughs> I, hopefully, I, I, hopefully, no one will have noticed. Well, I, I think I think I was thinking about this as well, right? This is just a, a little preamble to my uh, full thirteen. Um, <laughs> fourteen, think, god damn you! Fourteen. <laughs> um, it like if it, I think if I did like more of a manual sort of labour job, I don't think I'd wear as much perfume because I've been doing like decorating in the house today. Yeah. And I just forgot to put anything on. And yeah. I think it's because you haven't got time to be like, oh, contemplating and thinking about the fucking smell and stuff. Whereas if you're like in an office or whatever, or just doing your own thing, it's a bit more contemplative. You can dick around on your phone. You can like do stuff. Whereas like if you're just grafting, like you just don't give a shit. Like you might put some fucking deodorant on in the morning. Like I say, I'm not trying to generalize. Like if you if you go to a, if you work on a fucking building site and you wear like, you know, uh, a bandit every day or something. I'm like, fair dues to you, mate. Do you know what I mean? But like, I, I don't know. Like, I think I, I feel as though I probably wouldn't. I agree. I think if, oh, like, my, a friend of mine is a landscape gardener and I've worked with him before. And do you know what I liked the most about the job was all the smells, to be honest. Mm. It was like, you know, like digging the fresh earth and like being in, like, you know, just, just yeah. being outside and doing shit. I mean, I worked for him for about four days, nearly died, not going to do it ever again. <laughs> uh, but. Well, that, that's you're not really that's... built for physical labor, Ben. I'm not, no. Uh, I think that's fair to say. <laughs> well, that, that's another aspect to it, Pass though, me isn't that, Rake. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, the other one. <laughs> so, sorry, like, but I, bit, that was like... really rude. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, uh, that's another aspect to it, though, uh, Ben, because that's ab- absolutely right, that if you are out in, like, nature, sometimes you just want to enjoy that and you don't necessarily want to enjoy, like, you know, perfume so uh just just an interesting sort of side thought anyway so uh what am i wearing what have i worn so i worn uh etat libre d'orange attaque du soleil marquis de sard Ooh. do you know that one what's that one like no it's the one of the ones it's a what i haven't i haven't tried it's a, a meme about that the other day Oh, did you? Go on. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I can't remember what it was. Just fragrance memes, and uh, and it was about. Um, I think it was like the look on their face when they ask you what perfume you're wearing, and you say "Etat Libre d'Orange, Etat Cure Soleil," <laughs> whatever. There, there, there. <laughs> it is a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Um, so that, but but it, but in terms of the actual perfume itself, couldn't be more simple. It smells of lavender. Oh, really. Right, it's a it's a labdanum, and I've even I've even spoken spoken uh, exchanged a few messages with our pal uh, Quintin Biche uh, regarding its structure and materials used, etc. And uh, he didn't give a lot away, <laughs> to be honest, uh, other than saying because um, I I I loved it to begin with because I love labdanum, right? And I think labdanum is gorgeous, but I think if I'm honest, right. A, a, a solar floor, a solar resin, whatever you want to call it, and in the, just a thing that smells just relentlessly of labdanum, sort of not really my like jam. I, I think mm. labdanum is, and it's it's notorious for being this, right? It's not just me saying this. This is not my fucking you know being an expert on perfume. It's like a catalyst. It's like a it's a it, 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 people don't like this term either of a blender, but it's a kind of like it's an in between material. It's a material that like. That's why a lot of those Roger Doves are so good because they have a really adept, lovely use of labdanum. But labdanum is not, let's steal the show with labdanum, let's make a really mm. labdanum heavy perfume. Even if it's an amber perfume or whatever it is, often I like it to be used like sparingly, but but it's present and you know it's there and it makes things mm. more perfumey for want of a better word. And I just think that this on its own is stunning because I love labdanum, right? I love the smell of it, like actually fresh off the the sister's plants. I love it in the summer because like um, the, the race course in Chester uh, has, um, they always like have their garden like landscaped and shit, you know, like every year. And they basically have uh, labdanum, um, like, you know, cistus plants right outside the door. And, you know, we used to go and, like, walk the, the dog mm. on there and stuff. Because, to be honest, I think horse racing's cruel. 
Let's just let's just get it out there. I don't really like horse racing. I don't like the fact that they fucking whip them and shit. I like horses uh, and people like betting on it and there's all piss heads in the town and they fucking, you know, you're up to your knees in like styrofoam fucking containers and shit. Anyway, that's another thing. But um, <laughs> Yeah, that is quite a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but I'm just saying I don't like the race course. I don't go there to like, yeah. you know, look at the horses, you know, watch any of that shit. But... I, they have loads of labs in the, like the, to the point where you walk past it and you can just smell it. Like in the summer, it just beams off the thing and it's so beautiful. Mm. And this is basically that, right? But I did detect after a while of wearing it, there are some uh, other materials that are derived from uh, sisters, which I can't name off the top of my head now, but there's another material that has this, but it's very animalic and it, 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 it smells like labdanum but it's not. And I, uh, is it called Ambrome? I think it's called Ambrome. Oh, uh, Ambro, Ambrome. Uh, that is used in, yeah. uh, that's used in a number of uh, Roger Dove perfumes. Well, uh, uh, actually. wow. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it has, it has a, a stinky like quality to it. It has like a dirty, like animalic, almost like rubbery kind of undertone, which to me, I'm like, nah. I think if you use it correctly in a perfume, excellent. But smelling the neat stuff, I'm like, it smells a bit like labdanum. It smells basically almost 90% like labdanum, mm. like labdanum uh, essential oil or some other kind of labdanum that I love. Um, but then it has this uh, weird thing to it. And I sometimes get that from this. And I did actually ask him, is it amber? I mean, he was like, uh, no, it's like some amazing like sister's material that he was so impressed with. He wanted to make a, a, a solo sort of effort. Obviously, whatever he's done with the with the base of it or with other things that are in it, but it's mainly just this this labdanum material. And to be honest, when I sometimes I wear it, I get the amberum thing. Sometimes I wear it, I just get the labdanum. It's such an it's just an amazing perfume. Labdanum in itself is a really complex thing. It's a really beautiful resin. It's gorgeous, and I just recommend this perfume. I, I think it's I think it's amazing, it, especially if you want. A reference to labdanum. What does labdanum smell like? It's that. Uh, but even on me, it starts to grate after that. I get to a point and then I go, and then I start to love it again. Do you know what I mean? So mm. it's just it's just a fantastic perfume. Um, mm. uh, anyway, so there's that. Uh, then I wore uh, Arsen Lupin Voyou by oh, Guerlain. I love that. Love that. Yeah. Which is actually a really lovely uh, perfume. It's quite simple. Uh, slight is it slightly violety, uh, soapy thing? I can't even really remember. Uh, you, it, um, I, I, it's sort of I don't know. I'd probably get it wrong, but to me, it's a kind of smoky sandalwood, really. Oh um, right, okay. I, 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 but they have um, they changed the name of it, so uh, they've kept that one, but not the dandy one. Uh, um, right. And and they've changed the name of it for some reason, so it's still part of the um, whatever they call it, the Mattier kind of- whatever. Oh right, range. okay, yeah. But it's just now it's got a new name uh, and oh. a different ball. All right, that's okay. it. But anyway, um, so then I wore. <laughs> oh, just, I wore just, Les just, Ab- just... Les Des Sandres. Um, really? Oh, you shitty bastard! I know, such a cunt. That's just a great <laughs> perfume. We've talked about it enough, but such what a, a fuck! What a, what a great perfume. Uh, <laughs> then, then I wore a uh, kerosene, another YouTuber's perfume, kerosene. Rude elements. I'm. I suspect Ben might chime in on this one. Do you like that? Do you like? Rude I don't know elements? it. But I don't. I don't. Yeah. No. I, to be honest, I've not smelled a lot of kerosene. I've got a couple, and I love them both. But I've not smelled any outside of those, really. Um, I'd have thought that you'd have been right up your street. Yeah, ben. pain to get hold of. Expensive. They yeah. are a pain to get hold of. Yeah. Um, I'd have I, that you'd have loved I, been all over them. I'd say that this is quite similar to Copper Skies in that he completely overdoses like spices like you wouldn't believe it's a very crude approach but i love his perfumes i love them i think they're br- i think they are like they were a breath of fresh air then and they're just mm. they're just brilliant they're very like diy fucking you know uh, but they're excellent like they're really bold and just really good and I, I, they, this kind of like it transitions quite a bit and I've probably written a re- better review somewhere of it, but just know that it's very spicy. It's got that like cinnamon uh, and like hot kind of like resiny 
loads of like myrrh and oh. you know stuff like that mm. in it it's very good it's very good and i think it's got loads of like uh it's called oud elements and i believe that there's loads of like oud base or things that are uh supposed to resemble oud without actually having oud in it might have oud in who knows um mm. but it, it, it's it's great it's great uh, then I wore a uh, 31 Rue Cambon, which we've spoken about. Mm. You know, it's a kind of uh, irisy, really gorgeous. I, I walked stunning. down Rue Cambon. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Yeah. Past the Chenille uh, Did you go stuff. in? No, yeah. no, sadly did not. Uh, yeah. I was on a strict, not too much perfume shopping uh, uh, thing, but there you go. Oh, okay. Well, you got to have a little window shop at the... Uh... Rue Cambon. Anyway, it's Indeed. just brilliant. Rue Cambon, stunning, lovely, great, love amazing. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love that? I mean, it's Chanel. It's chic. It's beautiful. Then I wore uh, Mona Mona de Oreo, uh, Bohia Bohem, Bohem, Bohia Bohem. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, fact, I don't a, think I've ever tried any Mona de Oreo. Oh, uh, well, you're in for a, a couple of absolute bangers that are sort of um, musk is being one, isn't it? So is it, I'm not sure if it's just called musk, but it's I think it is just called musk. Uh, it? They, they, I mean, but I know qu- queer. There's one just called queer. Uh, there probably is one musk. I, I they, they, like can't really go wrong like with that brand, even the reformulated ones, because unfortunately she's passed away, uh, and like they they reformulated them, but they've kept you know, the aesthetic of the brand. And I think even the newer ones, I think this one might even be one of the newer ones. Um, It's a brushy lavender uh, with like tea. It reminds me of tea. Uh, So it's a kind of almost, yeah, like a, like a kind of reimagined lavender herbal, sort of very herbal perfume. Um, And yeah, just a great, lovely wear, really just, just a good, a good, good perfume really. Uh, and then I wore uh, Ormond Jane Zandria. Um, oh yeah, which is it's not my favourite uh, Ormond Jane. Actually, it's quite earthy from my recollection. Oh, uh, I'd say it's quite along the lines of a lot of the other Gezeshoen type. Uh, very musky, very sort of nothing. It opens with loads of woody amber, right to the point where I think. It would put somebody off, and you go, "What the fuck is this?" Like, but but it's weird that it's almost like a top note. It's almost like that astringent, like alcoholic kind of thing, and then it sort of goes away, and you're like, "All oh, right, okay." It's actually this really soft, like musky thing that really, as nothing as it is, it's really like interesting to wear, and it's very like minimal, but things just pop out during the day. I really like it, uh, but mm. I, I can I, I don't think it's the most like hugely imaginative like perfume but it's it's up there you know in with their with their other stuff it fits the aesthetic then i wore a uh, chanel anteus which we all love and we know is amazing and don't really need to talk about that uh then i wore green irish tweed by uh, creed which yeah. i'll just say is uh quite a harsh um <laughs> like but but better version of um cool water as far as i'm concerned uh, yes, it's well. And gave expensive. quite a little snort there. Yeah. What? Oh, it's, it was the first. It was the first Creed I ever bought. That's all. And I just, just, I've still got like a hundred. And, was it the old hundred and twenty yeah, bottles right. with the square shoulders? Yeah, yeah. yeah I've still got one of those like ninety nine percent full. I just never really. I'm not sure. I do like it though, but it's just one of those things I bought. Probably it worth a fortune a day. Yeah. And, um, oh, well, my, I really like it. Mine's got like a furry green label. No, yeah, like the old, mm. so be the seventy-five mil one. Yeah, so yeah, so, and, so previously they did it in a seventy-five mil with a sorry. Uh, actually, no, I'd just like to punch myself in the face for knowing this <laughs> stuff. So I'm not going to go on. I, I, I'm not even going to go on about it. it. I, I, but, I, but I love, nice. I love it though. It's 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 like it's it's so like ridiculous that it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, so anyway, uh, then I wore a. Uh, Bloon Keen Castana, which we all talked oh, about yeah. on here, kind of nutty mm. uh, sort of sandalwood thing that was not mm. roundly liked by everybody, but I love it. Uh, kind of got like a vetiver sort of nutty kind of thing to it. I fucking love that perfume. I think it's I think it's genius. Mm. But anyway, uh, then uh, I wore a, a Fronte et Evocateur 
Champagne House Harvest, which was in my list last week. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wore it again because my missus, right, who, uh, long-suffering uh, partner <laughs> of mine, uh, she never buys me perfume because she knows better than to buy me perfume because, you know, I'm a picky because. fucker and... It's not so she's like, you've got enough, I don't need to buy you any, et cetera. We know, we know the drill. But uh, she very thoughtfully, because I, I tried those the other week. And by the way, little spoiler, uh, we're all getting these samples soon. So, um, so uh, the perfumer was listening the other week and was like, oh, I really enjoyed it. No them. way. Yeah. So no he said, way. We'll, Not we'll another s- brand I have to shill for. <laughs> Fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> Well, they, this is it. Like, you know, we're, they're coming thick and fast and uh, just be prepared to, you know, be uh, really obsequious and just be like, oh, it's so <laughs> fucking great. And all this. <laughs> so anyway, so that's what we're going to do. Right. But no, it, 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 this this perfume has uh, a, a material in it, I believe, uh, uh, like a green cognac essential oil, which basically really, really, really smells like champagne. It's effervescent. It's kind of like, it's it's just beautiful i hate i hate these wine like trying to be wine when they're like oh yeah let's let's like make it like wine and have this horrible like great accord and then we'll make it boozy with this boozy thing it's like no that is not the essence of champagne you're not capturing the you you know the the sort of special kind of aspect of champagne and again this really does uh it's got a weirdness to it because it's by carter the perfumer who does his own Mm. thing and this is for another brand that is somebody else's brand that he's just been brought in as the perfumer for. So he's been given briefs to make these. And then nothing like his own brand, which we will also probably talk about at some point. And I think, that's, I think that's great that he has, like... Uh, they're, they're sort of unmistakably his because they're well-worked and they've got, you know, great ideas and great materials and stuff. But they're not. They're 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 definitely distinct from his own brand, uh, which is very you know has some very unique stuff going on. So that was great. Anyway, anyway, my missus bought me that perfume, and I was I was so surprised. It, like I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, you were going on about it the other day, and I took it upon myself to order it from America for you. And he sent Aww. me a little. He sent me a little note where he said um, to my favorite uh, Instagram asshole. <laughs> Well, to my favourite ass, to my favourite <laughs> asshole on Instagram, uh, happy birthday, uh, etc. So I was like, oh, that's that's uh, lovely, um, and yeah. So he's like great, and I've got that perfume now. So wonderful. Uh, then I wore a Reflection Forty Five Man, which we're going to talk about later. Then yesterday I wore a Com de Garcon Eight Eighty Eight or Eight 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 or didn't that mm. used to be like CFAX or something? Wasn't that yeah. what you put in? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? CFAX page 888. Fucking hell, old school. Uh, so, yeah, um, it, does anyone know it? Anyone know it? The Comme de Garçon or the CFAX? The Comme de Garçon. It's a gold one C-Fax. that people are like... Like like people say uh, it's like turmeric, and it does have... It's, it, it is wild, right? It's a wild perfume. I, I hated it when I first tried it. I hated it, right? And then uh, it became that fit forbidden fruit thing we were talking about before where I was like, oh, actually, did I hate it? Or do?" And, I, and then I think about my taste and go, well, that was like years ago and maybe I love it now. So I, I got a sample of it to try and I was like, oh, my God, I, I love this now. This is like the best thing ever. And then I tracked it down because it's now discontinued um and yeah i found the bottle and i love it i love it it's quite similar to do you know the man two uh the silver bottle it's yeah, kind yeah. of like a very metallic that it's it's almost like that but with this weird uh and it's so brutal all day it's just giving you it's so modern smells like it's just like nothing else it's it's very you know i hate saying very unique because there's not gradations of uniqueness is there but it's a really unique no it's unique it's just a un, it's just unique um anyway then today i'm wearing un, unum but not today um, and oh yeah, is that yeah all that sensey one y- y- it's the blood one yeah it? it's a heavy metallic cheesy almost like pissy uh but with like a kind of 
a stone sort of like resin like dry it, it I, like it's weird i've got it on now and i only just sprayed it not long ago and uh yeah it's weird um and it's it's not as gross as you think though like based like you know people say oh it's based on like you know hannibal lecter and all this and there's blood and all that i, I thought it was pretty i love horrible. it i actually i, I, I weird, do love it, 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 love it. it, it <laughs> it's very strange uh but i do i lo- i do love it i do love it i must say so that's it yeah <laughs> wow we got to the end Every time anybody mentions perfumes are like blood or bilge or whatever, the Ben is always like, "Oh yeah, no, I've got that. I love it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not as weird as you think. Uh, no, I mean it's yeah. actually quite wearable for something that smells of blood and puke and uh. like death and yeah, <laughs> excellent. Uh, Just wait till next episode because I've got one coming. Oh really? Really? Oh god! <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So um, yeah. Right, well, let's wrap up part one because, like, it feels like a sensible time to do so. Um, And if you are listening out there and you've detected anything that you don't like about this episode, please be sure (laughs) to leave us a five-star review. (laughs) Because we're not interested in negative feedback. Uh, We only want to hear the good shit. Um, No, that's that's not true either. Anyway, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Uh, Not sure I ever did. Uh, let's uh, wrap up part one here. Uh, we will be back in part two with a maximum shilling for Amouage. Stick with us. Hooray. Hello, and welcome back to part two of Les Odorants. This week, we are going to be talking about Amouage, a venerable house based in Oman that have been knocking out some incredibly good perfumes for a great number of years. Um, Historically, I say historically, if you go back a few years, uh, uh, most of the perfumes um, of sort of, I guess, recent uh, uh, note came out under the creative directorship of Christopher Chong. Um, and, um, but more recently, uh, Renault Salmon has taken over. Um, and since uh, Renault taken over, there's been quite a few releases, including the ones we're going to be talking about today, which are the exceptional X traits. Um, there are, uh, four exceptional X traits. Uh, I have been, uh, shilling like mad for uh interlude 53 um for some time now and uh anyway amouage very kindly donated uh some uh sample sets for these four uh exceptional extracts for all of us to test and uh there are uh four of them uh they are honor 43 reflection 45 interlude 53 and epic 56 um with the numbers denoting the perfume concentration for each one uh, the honor and the epic are based on the women's perfumes and the reflection and interlude are based on the men's um and that's all i can tell you about them really um they're jolly expensive about 375 pounds ish i think retail for 100 mil so uh you know not the sort of thing you should buy on a whim unless you're jolly well off um but yeah who would like to kick us off with thoughts about any of them really i mean where to start i know i know that epic 56 is going to be a big discussion yeah. point for a number of you so maybe start there cool i mean i i mentioned it in the last episode of les odorants because i somebody sent me a, a a little decant, <clears throat> sorry. And I was in love then, and I'm even more in love now. I just, I cannot get enough of it. And I've spaffed it all over myself about three days in a row. And I just, in heaven, absolute. What is it that you love about it? The rosiness is, doesn't... I have a love-hate relationship with roses and sometimes they go very, very soapy on me and they can also go quite sharp on me as well. And this Hmm. is a beautiful rose and it feels more woody. And my husband said, 
you smell like you're inside a rose bush as opposed to the rose. And I kind of understand what he means when he says that. Just it feels it feels like a very, very grown up rose, but it, it's just delightful. But at the same time, there is still that very rosy quality. Can I say rose again? And rosy quality that is very diffusive around you as well. So there is a sweetness. But actually, if you if you sniff your wrists up closer, then there's something else going on as well. Um, and I it's just a heavenly heavenly rose to me and i yeah it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and i hate how much i love it because it's really expensive (laughs) (laughs) okay james um i felt uh, like you wanted to come in there james i mean i i talked about this the week before so like not the last podcast but the one before because I just decided to get a sample of it and I absolutely loved it. I just went on and on about it. I don't know if anyone remembers, um, but I just said how amazing the Pink Pepper is in the opening, uh, how stunning all the sparkliness of the resins is, mm. uh, how when you actually wear it, because at the moment, yeah, okay, you get like a jammy, sweet sort of like thing, but... As far as I'm concerned, I can't really perceive rose in the opening at all. But then it becomes such a rosy perfume later on. And then you've got this kind of like oud. The the, the epic woman has always been possibly one of my favourite amouages anyway. But what these do with the the higher concentration is basically stretch out the period of like the, the exact same thing but just longer and just more intense and just a deeper experience and this is absolutely stunning like beyond like even if it just had that opening of the the really pink peppery uh or uh, 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 kind of like fizzy like explosion of that for like hours i'd be happy there's actually a ma- men's uh honor do you know honor man um, which has a really similar pink pepper sort of bias to this, but it's it's nowhere near as like deep and amazing as this, but it's like close. I'm, yeah, um, I, just absolutely floored by it. It's amazing. It's stunning. See, I, I love it. I love it. I have to get over the pink pepper though. <laughs> I, um, you love that bit, whereas I feel like I have to get sure. over that bit. And then, well, I I'm love the love. whole. The, like I say, I love the whole perfume. I love. The later dry down, I completely mm. understand where you're coming from mm. with that because it's it's really because you could be bored of oud roses or like woody kind of roses like this, but I, like this is like I, nah. I'm not an oud rose person at all. I don't have any oud mm. roses, and I, whenever I try them, I was like, oh no, not for me. It's just not my thing. Um, and that I'm so surprised how much I love this. When I mean, if, if someone said to me, "Oh yeah, Fliss, you're going to be in love with an oud, uh, oud rose," I'd be like, "Oh fuck off! No, I'm not. that's really not my thing." And I just yeah. um, head it's amazing, this. amazing, mm. really. Okay, Ben, I feel like I'm probably going to bridge a gap between uh, James and Fliss and Dan here and say <laughs> that um, I went in blind with this one. Okay. I, 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 if I went in blind with all of them, I didn't really look up the note listings of any of them. Um, I knew a few of them beforehand, but but this one I didn't. Um, but I'd had Epic Man, and I hate I didn't hate it actually, but I just thought it was boring, and I sold it. So I was not expecting very much, and I sprayed it. And was like the fuck is this big rose thing? Um, and I do like the the opening. I think is incredible. Like wow, like it's a real like wow perfume, like stunning perfume. Like you get that big dark rose, but underneath it, I think what I really enjoyed was underneath all that. Like the the because the, the, the rose is obviously sort of quite forefront. James didn't sort of get a lot, but I got a lot of rose and geranium right up front. Um, but underneath all that, you get this like dark velvet sort of like textural incense that's uh, like a, almost like a, a, it's got that lovely warm sort of smoky thing that Amouage does, um, and it's, it was just really nice. And then under that, like dark woods, and I thought it was beautiful, and I really loved it, and I did really love it, and I thought it was amazing. And about six hours mm. later, and like we say, all these perfumes are just like beast mode, like mm. they last you forever. About six hours later, I just thought it was really boring, um, and I got quite tired of it. But they, but I think the thing is, is I would probably still wear this for that first sort of five or six hours, which I thought was fucking stunning. 
but it just 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 it like by the end of the day i was like okay there's nothing here now it's just a bit of a kind of like geranium and rose and i'm a bit bored um so that's interesting i reckon that if you and i could maybe like swap skin uh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, around the five or six hours mark then this perfume would work for both of us um for me the pepper is just too much it's too much um and and i'm sort of with fliss it's something that you have to get past but i didn't feel i could get past it um it, it is that same pink pepper that i get from the um uh creed uh ah, royal right. royal oud and oh uh, uh, yeah that's what you're saying uh, and it, it, yeah. it just uh, it just sort of it just kind of i wouldn't say it turns my stomach but it, 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 you know i just i don't get on with that pepper at all it's uh, quite heavy isn't it it's it's, quite... it's very heavy um and it's very foody and it is it all is almost like pepper that could just be you know oh no i've accidentally can, eaten a, a metric ton of pepper and it's sitting in my can, stomach can i just say as far as the actual quality of the pepper is concerned mm. i love i love uh, creed royal oud right i think it's really good but again i think in comparison there there, there is no comparison really between the kind of i would say probably a really cheap like cinchus mole fucking you know material compared to this whatever this pink pepper is it's like b- miles better than, <laughs> than that stuff but if you don't like pink pepper you you're not going to go oh yeah i see the difference between this like really amazing pink pepper and this if you just don't like it across the board do, do you know what i mean yeah. and sometimes you might even prefer the the cheaper material but whatever this is like it's like it lasts longer it's more like it literally smells like like sniffing a load of uh pink peppercorns mm. uh, which sometimes like because i have i have some uh pink pepper materials lying around here and they don't always convey what what you kind of want them to in 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 a perfume so i think the quality of them in this or whatever the perfumer has done uh, because it's Cecile Sorokin, isn't it? Who, it is. She did the original one and she's done this. Whatever she's kind of surrounded it with to make it all sparkly and like like say probably the, the resins and stuff. I just think it's so complimentary that it may it really elevates it. For me, as a kind of pink pepper connoisseur, as I, you know, seem to be, um, I think that this is like by far and away better. I understand the comparison, but I just think like if you love pink pepper, this is like this is your fucking holy grail of pink peppers, whereas like you know, um, uh, the the creed is maybe like you know an a, a, an okay one. You know. So, I, okay, so I um, of all four of them, and and this sort of sounds probably sacrilegious, but I found it the most boring out of the four of them, um, and it felt to me like. A lot of pink pepper, um, and then some nice kind of rosy, uh, woody amber sort of stuff in the base. Nice. Um, and I sort of caught my wrist a few times later, much later in the day, and thought, oh, yeah, no, no, it's really good. I really like it. But it's only sort of right at the tail end that I can enjoy it. Um, just something... So we're essentially the polar opposites, aren't yeah, we? Exa- exactly, yeah, exactly, which is why I said if we could sort of swap skin halfway through, it'd be fine. Um, the the comparison I got, though, um, and I was slightly baffled by this, but I, I kept thinking Ormond Woman. Um, and I kept thinking, this is really similar to Ormond Woman, and I don't understand why Fliss was sort of semi-disparaging about Ormond Woman, yet this is, you know, amazing to her, given how similar they are. I thought... I can't be the only person who thinks that way. And it turns out I'm not the only person who thinks that way. On the Fragrantica, it smells a bit like, but I am in a vanishingly small minority of people who think that there's a similarity, it seems. So yeah, make I it that what you will. I have all my woman here, actually. I have it on my I ain't table. I think woman is better than this. <clears throat> Ooh! Yeah, <laughs> now there's going to be a fight now, isn't there, between Fliss and, and Ben. Um Go on. Uh, is, are you actually comparing them there, James? I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm smelling the Orman woman. 
Um, I don't really get how you could make any comparisons except for <laughs> yeah, they probably contain some of the same is it, is it, is it, stuff. Is it, like, what's it, is it Shinkus Mole or something? That the, the yeah, the pepper. That's like the pink pink pepper. But I don't really, I'm not really getting much pink pepper. Like I say, I'm just smelling the vial here, which I never. Did. I'll, I'll spray it on a strip. I think this is a much more cosy, uh, musky, uh, much easier to get on. That that the 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 that is so spiky, and this is so smooth. It's like I, I don't get, I don't really get. I can, but the thing is, every like like I say, there's a lot of things in perfumes that like will remind you of stuff. Oh, okay, okay, all right. So I've just sprayed it now. And still, I don't think they're particularly similar, but this has a fresh sort of top note. The only comparison I can think of is yeah, in but the, like I say, I don't, I don't really get the comparison. The this is like quite. Um, I'm trying to desperately rack my brains mm -hmm. for my memory of Ormond Woman, mm. but it was very woody. Mm. Oh. Well, so someone else, someone else thought it was uh, similar. Which Ormond is Woman is great enough though. for me. That is a nice perfume. See, I like Ormond nice Woman. Perfume. That 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 to me has uh, an amount of pepper that I can work with. Um, this had too much pepper. Um, there's another one which I uh, have had before, which I cannot for the life of me uh, remember the name of. So it's a bit of a fucking stupid story at this stage. But I'll try and remember it and then come back to it. Um, okay, uh, so uh, so that is, I guess, Epic Fifty Six. Uh, strong mm. thumbs up from um, from James and Fliss. Um, sort of lukewarm from uh, Ben and a kind of probably not for me from me um can we talk about my favorite which is yeah, which is interlude 53 i i mm -hmm. i i mean i wouldn't advise drinking any perfume it's categorically bad for you but i i would seriously consider like having this kind of hard wired into my olfactory senses in some way i i find interlude 53 uns Unspeakably brilliant. I've got nothing but absolute I, praise I, for it. I just, um, I sprayed it and I <laughs> got it. Jesus. This is what a man should smell like. <laughs> I just. Golly. Yeah. Golly. And then I. And, <laughs> go, golly. <laughs> exactly. I just, I'd never smelt it before. I, I know I'd never smelt it before. <laughs> I don't know very much about Amouage. Oh, really? Mainly because it's all quite expensive. I kind of shy away from them. <laughs> as much as possible um but and i know that it gets a lot of love i just it's phenomenal bright and spicy and clean and then this dark leathery smokiness underneath oh just golly yeah really <laughs> yeah just golly <laughs> i think it's <laughs> that's golly oh wow <laughs> oh shucks wow <laughs> um yeah Gone. It's, yeah, it's interesting that it's your favourite. Um, I don't know why I would have thought reflection would be, but you know that's your kind of you know you're like a Fuji, don't you? But uh, this yeah. you did send. I think I think you sent me a sample of this. Oh, probably yeah. I, coming back to it, and I think like Ben sort of touched on this before with the with the black mm. iris one, mm. which I'm sure he'll probably mention. Uh, that that there was kind of a bit of a backlash because it was like. Why are Amouage doing flankers now and why are they doing this different concentration thing? You know, either from purists or people who don't like the brand or just people in between who are like, what, what is this change of direction? Or I, I, I don't even know where it was coming from, to be honest. It does appear to be like, oh, they're going... And may, maybe we should save that discussion for the end. But no, 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 no. Let's, let's do it. That, well, well, well I, I just think that, like, obviously... Like, when I saw them, I was like, oh, right, OK, they're taking probably their best sellers or things like interlude which let's face it has got a life of its own it's a mm. bit like a kind of it's mm. almost it's almost their sort of aventus in mm. kind of yeah. in a sense that it's very popular with men, bros man, man's perfume yeah it's a bit of a bro thing isn't it and it was around the time i think did it come out in 2012 13 i i bought uh, a, a bottle of it and again I, I like say it's rare like I like to like mention when I 
buy something because it's usually an impulse. And mm. that was a real impulse that I felt, I have to have this because it was so unusual, so unlike anything else that I'd, that I'd smelled. And and for them to, to take it to like a different place now with these and with the black iris and things, it's not just an excuse to have, you know, a, a better, you know, a, a stronger concentration or let's bung a bit of something else kind of note with it. It's really considered, right? And if you like the original, of course you're going to like these. But, like, I find, like, this is absolutely, like, stunning. I remember wearing it and just being like, it even wears, they all wear, like, really, like, they're just an experience. It's a whole day. You've got to, you've got to almost, like, set aside a fucking day to be like, I've got to understand this perfume fully. I've got to go through all the stages with it. And I've got to understand it. And have it, being very familiar with the original, and my bottle is so fucking strong, right? Mm. I've got like a 50 mil that I must have worn like God knows how many times, and it just never seems to go down because no. I must just have to it, wear like two sprays or it something. It expands as well. So it like gets bigger in the bottle. So you, the more uh, you spray, the, the fuller your bottle gets. It's just, it, 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 it's... I don't know, but th- this one is is amazing as well. But I almost felt that, and and I understand why people would feel like that. Th- these are by no means redundant, right? Mm. But I kind of feel <laughs> as though I've got that one. Do I really need this one? Maybe I do. Yeah, maybe I you do. do. So, 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 I think I do. So, um, uh, you know, when I read that Amouage were releasing a stronger version of Interlude, my initial response was like. That is literally the last thing the world needs, is a stronger version of it's Interlude. It's very fucking... It's spinal tap, isn't it? Yeah, it's it, very it, like... It, yeah, you know. yeah, this goes up to 11. Like, why? Yeah, yeah well, you know, just for that final push. It, it, it's a ludicrous concept. It's absolutely ridiculous, and yet it works. And, and for me, um, the problem with uh, the original Interlude is that it is too diffusive. It's too big. Right, it, you know, um, do you remember? Uh, do you remember that talk at, 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 at the beginning of COVID about fucking mm. squashing yeah. the uh, the curve, flattening the curve? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's sort of what yeah, we, uh, Interlude Fifty Three does. It flattens the curve, so you have you have the same power. Right, but just spread out over a much longer time, so it doesn't. Mm-hmm. So it's not sort of killing people kind of uh, at a rate that the hospitals... We've not got dead people in the streets yeah, as you walk past. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's no excess mortality because the health system has collapsed as a result of Interlude 53. Whereas Interlude itself, there's a spike and that kills people. You know, there are people literally unable to breathe. I, I got the train to London once and there was a guy on the train who was must have been wearing a good... 10 sprays of just regular interlude and you know i can appreciate it for smelling great but mm. fuck me it was almost impossible to breathe in that train carriage right whereas well, uh, 53 just makes it so much easier well that isn't that funny that that it's a uh, it, it, it's funny to have this kind of exercise in what perfumes would benefit from being a stronger concentration and i think because mm-hmm. of the perfumers involved in this and i think they're all the original perfumer aren't they that they've obviously looked at it and gone, yeah, we can do that. Because I think any other perfumer who would be like, no, it doesn't require that or it doesn't need it, I think there's only certain ones that they would do it with and there's got to be a way of doing it. And I think they've sort of captured, exactly like you say there, that like some things maybe do benefit from uh, being stronger and it's not often the ones that you think. Stronger, I'm using stronger in fucking quotations here, you know, mm. Uh, more impactful, uh, longer lasting, whatever you want to call it. But I think Mm. the whole composition has been thought about as to how it will wear over a longer period of time, maybe slightly closer to the skin. And uh, that is the thing of the the EDP to Parfum concentration or the EDT to EDP. Mm. There's all these things Mm. that you've got to consider rather than just let's whack more oil into it. You know what I mean? Mm. People who say, oh, it's more oil concentration. Well, that doesn't really mean anything. It, the, the the whole structure of the perfume has to be sort of reworked and they have to think about it in terms of what can we get away? Well, how much stronger can we make it? Which is why they all have these different numbers on because that's exactly what the perfumer could probably work to, to say, 
I'm going to make it this concentration because of the materials that are involved in it or how do we make it? You know, there's a very deliberate thing to why there are all mm. different numbers like that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. interesting on uh, for Grand Occurrence, because I didn't know, hadn't ever smelled it before, I had, had a good read of all of the reviews. And it, this this was the one that seemed to be most split by the people uh, leaving reviews as to whether or not there was any point to it. Like, so like I would say about 50-50 people saying... Don't bother, you just wear interlude, you don't need it. And another, the other group of people just going, it's very different, it's much denser, mm. you know, it is a different experience. But it was really interesting that this is the one that seemed to split mm. the audience the most. But I wonder if that's something to do with it being interlude, and interlude is a bit of a darling, like, mm. you know, um, because, and to sort of like knock on to that, Black Iris, right? I fucking love this. Mm. And well, when it came out, Everyone panned it. It got crit like like everyone was like, "What the fuck is this?" It's just like interlude, but worse. It does, you know, it, it's not as big. It's not as base mode. And it, I think you know, like those those the fact that they were the big criticisms, I think, tells you everything you need to know really about the critique. Like, I, I, I think it's I, fuck all I, I, pointless. Not worth a damn. I like think, the fact that sorry, I think some of that backlash was that a lot of bottles were given to influencers, and a lot of the influencers were like oh, yeah, it's like this, but it's got, like, an iris note to it. And people were like, oh, fuck off. Do you know I remember I mean? like, some, one influencer came out and said, oh, it's, it's it's like interlude, but Dior Hon Parfum. And I just thought, you fucking moron. Like, you, <laughs> exactly. Like, that you were nearly put off fucking it. moron. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I, well I, I, so I pre-ordered this, got it right, day right. one, fucking loved Because I was like, interlude with iris? Shit, yes. Because that's, like, two <laughs> of my favourite things in the world. So I pre-ordered it, got it, like, first day. I still fucking love it. And I still think that it's better this one but you think it's better than 53 as well i do but i think mainly because um and i do agree with what dan was saying that 53 solves for me one of the problems that i have with interlude which i mean i love interlude hmm. to bits but it is just too much for me like I, I don't i'm not i don't like wearing perfume that's that big like i don't like being the perfume guy i don't want to walk in a room and everyone goes oh smell you coming as you're walking like hmm. it's like my dog when he hears people coming like up the street yep. do you know what i mean that's interlude it's like the human dog. Um, <laughs> you know, people will like, smell you like 50 yards up the road. And I don't really like that about it. And this, I think Black Iris solved that. But I also think that's what this does. And I think this is brilliant because of mm. it. And I think it's deeper. But what I think is interesting, and no one's mentioned, so maybe I'm wrong or, you know, maybe whatever. But I feel like this Interlude 53 plays up the food aspects of Interlude quite a lot. The, yeah. It's the, very herbal. The oregano. Um, oregano? Mm. I think, and I personally love that, and I think it gives it depth and spice, mm. but I definitely feel like it plays it up, and sometimes I feel like it just plays it up just a tad too much, and that's why I prefer Do you think it's got loads of iris. orange oil in the top of it? it? smells very orangey to me, I think. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Has it got I've orange really oil? Of it, that it, way, but as you it say, doesn't it, feel as, it doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't feel as sweet as as the original. No, no. It definitely more, much more savoury, isn't it? Like the savoury food elements feel played up to me. Yeah, there's no orange, but apparently no orange. it's uh, oregano, pimento, and bergamot are those top notes. But it kind of conjures orange. A pop mm. the poppinax maybe the labdanum. Are the, um, mm. I don't know. Something conjures orange for me. Anyway, interesting. It's nice though. I liked it. I thought it was. I thought it was excellent. But do you know, funnily enough, um, what I felt most about um, Epic, and not Epic, sorry, uh, Interlude. What, what I walked away from feeling was like the the least. Uh, the, I, I, the one that I felt was the the most underwhelming, maybe. But I put that down to the fact that I've smelt Interlude so often, and I've got you know I've got Interlude. I've got the flanker like Black Iris. Love it. So when I sprayed this one, it was like, oh okay. It's amazing, but it's interlude, mm, and yeah. I, and I felt a little bit sort of underwhelmed by it. Um, but I sort of say I feel like maybe that's I, due to the exposure of it yeah. rather than it being crap because it's certainly not crap. I, it's, so, it's, so, you know, so, so I've brilliant. always I've always struggled mm. with interlude though because of its complete, you know, lack of versatility. It's it, it's it's objectively unwearable. It's it's like an antisocial perfume. It's so enormous. Um, and and I think what this does is it, it just sort of perfects it in 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 a yeah. uh, in a brilliant way. Um, okay, well I mean that's that's me going on and on and on and about my uh, favourite. So we've done the Epic Fifty Six and the Interlude. Um, where should we go next? 
Reflection. Uh, Reflection. Reflection 45. Uh, okay, go for it. James. Well, I, I wore it the other day, uh, so I've had the full uh, experience with it, as, as I have done with the other two. Uh, the only one that I haven't worn is the last one, the honour that we'll talk about after this. But this, this to me, um, has always been, and it, it, it's it's not the, because uh, it was one of the earlier uh, Amawages that was even before the Christopher Chong and the, it was in the original bottle wasn't it that it kind of looks like the, the can jar yeah the, the dagger those, um yeah the, the yeah the, the that flack on that looks like a, a dagger um I, just i mean yeah like it's it's a high class like really really well done amazing fougere with like little magical like bits to it but again i think it was a kind of victim well for, for me it kind of put me off as like that there were other fougeres that had standout things to them, right? Whereas this is a very, 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 very good fougere. Not this one specifically, I'm just talking about the original now, compared to things like Invasion Barbar, which has that wonderful, like, herbal sort of quality to it. It's like, why would you, you know, or, or there's like uh, an Histoire de Parfum, which is kind of similar to this as well. Uh, then there's another one... Uh, Let's say the Tom Ford ones, the recent Tom Ford ones that came out, they have like this patchouli thing and they have like modern aroma chemicals sort of like bite to them. And then there's uh, like Hubegon. So the Hubegon um, Fougere Royale, which has that really like rubbery, like patchouli. So it's when, like whenever we've talked about like Fougere Accords, you've got your lavender, you've got your warmth. I always go on about mm. the uh, Coumarin, Tonka, whatever. And then you've got an array of other things that you can bring into it. So you've got patchouli, you've got this kind of other sort of peripheral things that you can bring in and just like sculpt the Accord into a slightly different thing. Whereas this always felt a little bit like, meh, it's okay. It's, it's very, very good. But there's no, there's nothing that like really stands out and makes it like, you know, really like say stand out compared to all those other fougeres. Now that they've done this, they've they've upped the warmth and the base, and it's so rich and so, and I can, I think I can pick out of this more of the things that make reflection unique. Now I'd have to go back and try the original reflection, but I think this one really brings like it, it, i i had a wonderful experience wearing it mm. right so it is fucking sublimely good right and i kind of knew that the original was but i always sort of avoided it for exactly what i've said i've got a lot of those other perfumes that i mentioned so i just felt i kind of didn't really need it i don't know uh, even like le mal and like the dreamer and stuff well, like that really cheapo versions of it that i know are not as good but i'm kind of like i don't need that but this kind of makes me go, I might need this now. So, <laughs> and so I might need this version. I, I've always thought Reflection was uh, sort of in the same space as Le Mal. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's such a strange one that I, I, I would never associate this as being a fougere. I know it is. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's certainly not in, in the sort of classic masculine barbershoppy sort of uh, spirit of things um, and I think that's because there's a for me quite a pronounced sort of floral aspect to it um, which mm -hmm. uh, you know I don't normally associate with the fougere um, I I really I really like this perfume um, I mean it's for me it's 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 not going to come close to, to dethroning uh, uh, the interlude one as, as my pick of the the bunch but I do really like it. Um, I also think, um, and 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 I know we we don't sort of uh, I think we're all quite open minded about perfumes and stuff. But I always thought that Reflection Man was completely miscategorized as a masculine perfume in the first place. I think, I think it's it's very very unisex, um, you know, verging on feminine uh, because of the the florals. Um, which I, I, you know, I don't know, uh, just something to, to meditate upon, perhaps. So I think yeah. that about the interlude, though, I think that could smell phenomenal on the right guy. Just think, because of the woodiness 
with the the interlude. Sorry, Hang no, on. no, Do you the, mean the, the epic, epic, the epic, epic. Oh, sorry, oh, my yeah. mistake. Yeah. I think that, that I, I, I almost feel I'm a bit annoyed by the naming, particularly as someone who doesn't know that much about the house. Smelling them, I'm like, why are you giving them male, female names? Because <laughs> then it's for me they are they're all quite unisex. I'd also uh, wear the, I'd or I'd also wear the other one, the other the the, the that lovely leathery interlude. I lo- I, I'd, I'd wear kind that. Of like- I would wear that. I'd rock that. I, I just to talk about like the, the 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 thing of like whether we like you know male or female in like perfumes or whatever. I think Amouage have always had this kind of thing where there's a brief, and I like the fact that they have this kind of like male female kind of thing to it because you can go, oh, I actually prefer the female one or whatever. I, I don't need to be told like either no. way, but I kind of I like that they've got this kind of. Either they have a similar thread running through them or they go completely in different directions. But there's always something that sort of, like, t- ties the sort of concepts t- together. I, d- I mm. don't know. Like, I feel I feel they do it a lot better than other brands do. And I kind of... I, 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 so, I think they're going to go away from that, to be honest. And I think they have, haven't they, in, like, recent releases? They're not... Are it's, they still male it's and female? A, uh, it's a good question. Um... Because I mean, traditionally the, um, the 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 male ones. I mean, after the so originally they were the, like the canjar shape, and then they had the sort of cube with that sort of kind of like um, I don't know dome like sort of not dome. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, sort of thing. And then the more recent mm-hmm. ones, the 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 men's one has been a sort of squarer bottle like the interlude and and the woman's has been a sort of shorter fatter one with a domed cap rather than the mm-hmm. kanjar cap um but more and more of them seem to be coming out in what are what were the men's bottles but i think they're all i think they are all just drifting towards being unisex um and and which is i was sort of slightly surprised to see it actually labeled as epic 56 woman i thought it was mm. just epic 56 and uh, you know it happened to be keyed off the the original epic woman but yeah. it's, it's clearly a unisex i mean for fuck's sake it's a rose oud you know if, if yeah. there's one genre of perfume that's universally accepted as just being you know non-gender specific it would be rose oud i reckon um yeah so uh yeah uh, i um i mean i think the epic 56 pepper didn't work for me but it is a great perfume uh into a uh, reflection i don't know there's there's just something very very sexy about it in like um i don't like it at all i think it's you don't like reflection i, re- I really don't like it really? i find it i find it a bit dull and I've, there's something ever so slightly plasticky about it. I feels like it's meant to go suede and then it doesn't quite. And there's a plasticky feel to it that I just can't get over. And mm. the day I wore it, I felt a little bit sick all day, to be fair. It's just not my well, thing. I think you have to go through a, a sort of barrier again, exactly like I was saying. I, I put it on and I was like, wow, this is great. I love this. I love it. And then I got to about four hours and i was like oh fuck off i can't yeah. be doing with it it's making me feel sick right yeah and then you have to get get through that right and, <laughs> and it's like why why should i have to get through it i'm wearing a perfume i should enjoy it the whole time but i kind of almost was like this this coumarin like warmth is just too much it's making me feel a bit like bilious right yeah and then all it's of a sudden relentless. like you come through the other side of it and then like at literally like 12 hours later you're like Oh my god! Like my clothes smell amazing. So, so I completely get that, right? And it it, it does have a plasticky weird thing. It's mm. got that whole thing of like Dreamer and Lamal and and all that stuff. And yeah, that like floral element is a little bit like. And you could say, oh yeah, that's what like makes it unique and stuff. But it's not never going to be my favorite out of any of these. And I get why you would think it was boring. See, but I, I, think I don't like particular- Lamal either. That I think that's right. also, and it reminds me so much of it. And I, I reminds me of a time when like all my friends were wearing it and it just i just i disliked it then and this is just yeah. like an amped up posher turbo more Lamal. expensive yeah. turbo <laughs> lamal i've just <bleh. laughs> well the, the, the lamal's got a sort of um 
I mean, there is similarities for sure, but the Lamal's got like a load of mint and um, quite a sort of almost obnoxious amount of, of vanilla to it as well, which I don't mm. I don't feel like Reflection has. I think Reflection is is a much more grown up uh, take on that genre. Oh yeah, no, it, um, it, it is. It is. I don't. I haven't smelt Lamal for a long time, so I can't. My memory of it. This you is like probably a have. Memory. You, I mean, no, I don't think it, I have. You, you just like you. I don't think you can avoid it. There's always some twerp walking around smelling of it. But, uh, um, but anyway, yeah, I, I, just... I, I, I like it. I, I, I don't know if I'm quite in love with it. Uh, you know, in the same way that Interlude works for me. But I like it. Um, ben, what did you make of it? It's my favourite. I fucking is love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> fucking love it, and and really, weirdly, I, they re- this is so surprising given how I wouldn't have said it was polite. A it at is, all. you know, the, the, the aspect that I like of it that no one's mentioned is the massively powdery iris. Like it's so powdery, and I love it. I fucking love it for that. I really? I, I, I can see the criticism, and I can see that it's quite. I don't know. It's, it is a bit kind of like hyper sweet and stuff, but I love. That there's this like high, like oh just big cushiony powder and then underneath that this like lovely bright freshness and and of course it's got all that sweet stuff over the top but to be honest that just goes over my head I don't care I just love that just like I just I could just roll around in it all day long and just be covered in like just powder and just be like oh I'm a <laughs> that just, I love it I just thought it was fucking brilliant and and, and the thing is when you wear it sorry James I'll let you get on in a sec but. <laughs> um, like I just feel like when you wear it, it does feel like you're fucking rolling around in powder all day because it does consume you and it, you are in this big powdery bubble. I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. Sorry, James. Go on. I, 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 I just I need to, I need to mention that because I haven't I haven't touched on the the iris right, and it definitely has a, an iris element. However, I think it's more like. That kind of modern sort of iris, and I think I think you don't like these either, Ben. If I remember rightly, that sort of Prada, uh, like Prada long. No, I do type, like it, but like it's iris. For, I think it's weak. Do you know what I mean? I like I like kind of rooty irises, like are a bit stronger. Mm. But yeah, no. So I know, yeah. Um, but I, iris full it's stop got, is like I, I love it. Um, yeah. So do you, do you get like more of a? Because I I get that sort of like almost that sort of Andrea type like iris in here it's not it's not the, the like the the main player no, in like no, any no, no. respect but like yeah you definitely do get that from it and i, I like i really love those like lom and that that one i wore the other week the uh I've, I've got it on my desk here uh prada lom. intense wasn't it yeah 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 lom mm-hmm. intense it's got a little vibe of that to it so yeah, but again, it's the cum- it's the coumarin and the the relentless warmth of it that kind of makes me feel a bit like sickly after a mm. while. But then, it does have that kind of like the 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 uplifting sort of diffusiveness of that like iris accord and the like just general like quality of this perfume sees it through for me to f- through a kind of sickly period and into like okay, I like it again. Uh, towards the end but yeah I, I and for that reason and i was just saying about how it doesn't have anything unique it does it has th- think about how many perfumes that we mentioned that it sort of like is reminiscent of that is it in in and of itself is enough to kind of be like all right you know it's got some stuff going on that's that's really quite good um yeah it's such a mm. happy perfume it's a proper mood lifter like it's really mm. like Look at fuck. Fliss's yeah. face totally disagrees with you. <laughs> I, I find it oppressive. Oppressive. <laughs> it's too much. Right. It's just like so, what? <laughs> so if a gentleman caller came past wearing that, he'd be told to get to fuck, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jog on, mate. Jog on. Jog on, pal. Uh, yeah, it's um, interesting. Interesting stuff. So, um, Ben, I mean, I have to say, um, it's an unusually civilised perfume <laughs> for you to get so excited about. Uh, usually your tastes run to the more um, exotic, shall we say. <laughs> um, and, and, and and I think Reflection 45, it, or, or indeed the original Reflection, uh, very... Um, very mainstream, very mainstream, uh, very popular with bros, 
uh, bros and hoes. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to say that. Popular with bros and hoes. But well, uh, you have. Yeah, I have. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and so far I've not been arrested. So uh, that's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, this is, this is, devilishly popular for you how, <laughs> but, how do you feel about that yeah it's all right i i, I to be honest i, I suppose probably I, I play up a certain aspect of my tastes on the show just to be not contrary but to be have a unique voice if you know what i mean like there is there i i like clean stuff from time to time yeah actually no not that much. <laughs> you can almost hardly no, say I'm, the word time to time he said he I, just, I just sort of thought actually to, looking at my shelf not that much but like yeah. <laughs> but there are elements like like that you know i like there's one or two that i you know, literally like galan two galan uh was it lydia cool or that that's all right uh that's about that's about it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah no no but uh, no i do like that like you know stuff like that as well and like so i have i own green irish tweed fuck's sake um yeah, but you own it by your own <laughs> i don't know where it is it's it. over there somewhere <laughs> um but, uh, yeah but no well, i just so, thought i don't know anyway. i just there's like, i think it was the powdery thing i just fucking loved it i just I, the, yeah i just couldn't like that to me just was like i don't know as soon as i smelled it i was just like yeah this shit is I fucking love this shit it. Is yeah. the bomb. And it's got a great bottle Excellent. as well. Okay. So 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 far, your favourite has been Reflection. Mine is definitely Interlude. Confident that Fliss is, is epic. Mm. Uh James? Epic as well. Epic. Well, that mm. leaves a uh, little old honour out in the cold with none of us choosing it as favourite. So let's talk about honour. Um I don't particularly like it. <laughs> no, I knew you wouldn't. I knew it, you wouldn't. It, it's, it's far, far too floral for me. Um, it's, you know, uh, there is that tube rose that I can definitely pick up. Um, there's all sorts of other white florals. Um, it, it's not sort of... Um, it's it's not even sort of indolic, though. It doesn't sort of have that no. kind of shittiness to it. It's just floral and pretty. Um, and, and, and I think if I was uh, perhaps kind of, I don't know, into wearing dresses and, and going out for sort of, uh, you know, uh, brunch uh, at sort of fancy restaurants, then perhaps I might be wearing it. But it's it's not really me. <sighs> I, I, uh, it's the least imaginative of the lot that they've oh come on it's boring oh it's really really Wowza. really boring brutal it's but so dull it's however. so dull <laughs> it's very nicely made it's very expensive all of that stuff you can tell it smells of money it's so fucking dull it can fuck off well <laughs> <laughs> I, I i will just counter that with right that in perfumery right you can make a uh, all all this is basically is a lily of the valley perfume, right? Yes. So it's yeah. a lily, it's a lily of the valley accord, right? But it is one of the best yeah. lily of the valley accords like I've ever smelled in my life, because uh, it, it, it's so huge and like it, it, it's not imaginative. No, it's not. It has like this kind of crisp, like green sort of appley kind of. I, it, I think it says rhubarb, doesn't it, and mm. the notes or something, which you kind of do get, but it's not like that. And then it's just relentlessly, but there's like maybe a little so bit of like jasmine you, in there and stuff. If you want Lily of the Valley, I go Diorissimo, end of. This doesn't, this is not a patch on it. I think like as, as far as like a modern, like bright, uh interpretation of your lily of the valley i think it's i think it's amazing i think it's really good i couldn't wear it i wouldn't wear it but like as in perfumery terms it's so strong and like full-on uh if you like this sort of thing i don't think you can get anything like better than that but as far as like is it imaginative no is it really my bag not really but i think it's a great lily of the valley Hmm. Reminded me a lot yeah. of, uh, well, well, a little of um, Ubergant Calcay Fleur, uh, which I like. Uh, and I thought this was bloody good as well. But I also think it's boring, yeah. And it's not, it's, it's, it's not I probably wouldn't wear it very often. Just, I, I mean, I own Calcay Fleur and I, I sort of don't wear that very often either. But when I do, I do enjoy it. And I think I would get the same out of this. Like, I think it's bloody good. And I do 
really enjoy it, but it's not really my cup of tea. Too much white floral, boring. Interesting. Okay, I mean, it just I, smells too clean for me. It's so. I tell you, it is bloody good though. Like when you smell clean. it, like, like you say, like oh, it yeah, smells not, money. Like you, it smells. Yeah, it smells of money. It's but very, very clean. I mean, it's so nice and pretty mm. and all of that stuff. But I, I just want a little bit underneath it. Just something mm. under the hood, please. Please, please. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I mean, for me, it's just too, too, too girly. Is the bottom line? It's just the uh, uh, yeah, florals are too much for me. So it's, it's never going to be my style. But I was just looking. The, the nose behind this is Alexandra Carlin. Carlin. Oh yeah. Um, and I was having a look at what else she's done. Um, of note, I see three affinescence fragrances. Uh, cure, Ooh. cure, queer, queer curcuma, mm-hmm. oh, uh, yes. gin, gingembre <laughs> latte, which is, I guess, from one of the new Top Note collection, and Santel Basmati. Um, so it's not, you know, she's certainly not a perfumer who who only has one kind of. Uh, 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 you know, style in her repertoire or anything. Mm. Um, she also did uh, for Thamine, uh, one of their newer releases called Insignia, which probably none of you will have tried, but I picked a mm-hmm. bottle up on eBay not so long ago. It's very nice. It's a bit, smells a bit like, um, uh, it smells a bit like what maybe uh, Axe Body Spray or Lynx, whatever it is, uh, will be in like 50 years when it's evolved to a higher state of consciousness. That, that <laughs> I think, is uh, how I describe it. It's, it's very pleasant, really pleasant aroma. Um, uh, and that's that's all kind of uh, orange and whiskey, which is weird because it, it creates this kind of refreshing uh, sort of vibe to it. Uh, but nothing at all like this. So, um, you know, not not a perfumer that I would say, oh, look, there's a recognisable DNA that runs through all their stuff, because the Affinescence ones that I've tried, this Amouage and, and the Thamine, are all just completely different perfumes. There's, there's nothing that holds them together at all as a single recognisable style. Uh, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't, I'm, I'm wondering... I mean, um, if you were, I suppose, a uh, difficult question, but if you were choosing uh, the Amouage uh, exceptional extracts, you know, which ones to pull out and make uh, into a higher concentration perfume, are there any others you would have ra- see, rather seen them do than, than these? Great question. I mean, personally, I, 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 I would want uh, Jubilation uh, 25. The, mm. Yeah, that's a good one. I, 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 I love that perfume, but it, it doesn't really, it doesn't really last on me. I would rather it sort of goes through the gears quite quickly and then vanishes. I mean, it, it, it's. I know. I think we had we did this uh, one episode, and 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 you'd said you'd worn it, James, and and it went on yeah. all day or something for you. But for me, mm-hmm. it goes through the gears very quickly. Uh, you know, it's wham bam, thank you, ma'am, and 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 it's it's out of here. Um, I'd far rather stretch that out over a longer period of time. Um, yeah. You know, e- even at the expense of kind of not you know choking out everybody I know. Um, so, so definitely for me, uh, jubilation would be one that I would want. That is a that is a good call, and that's I uh, completely agree with that. Um, also, uh, lyric man, which I love. Right. Um, what's I'd, what's lyric like? Uh, it's a kind of sort of. Uh, without wanting to sound like one of these sort of poetry kind of twat <laughs> reviewers, it's a sort of ethereal rose. It's a very, oh, okay. very clean, again, for want of mm. a better term, uh, very uh, just, it's like smoke, but it's not smoky. Uh, it's almost like a trail of kind of hyper clean, like powdery rose mm. uh, with like uh, Ilemi and like things just, it's stunning. Right, nice, stunning perfume. One of the like one of the best Amouage perfumes, and again, I don't know what a stronger concentration would look like or would be like. Well, smell like mm. is the most yeah. important thing. Yeah, but mm. I kind of think like I don't know. I I don't know why I'm sort of I I never thought to wish for those, and you know they happened, 
And now it's very, it's almost a bit twatty to be like, oh yeah, but they haven't done my favourite one. <laughs> do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, it's a cool, no, it's a great question because that's the thing. They can't do them all, can they? Do you know what I mean? And I think, I think they've well, done the ones. Maybe they can. Kind of like, just well, maybe take them they've forever, just done the but... ones. Well, maybe the the ones that are just the best sellers, uh, yeah. and the ones that maybe the perfumers have gone. Yeah, we could do that because I I assume that Amouage have a kind of like you know relationship with the perfumers where they if the perfumer said, look, I I you know I don't really think that would be. I don't know. I I'm just completely fucking making this up now, but I kind of get that sort of like thing where this has been very much like they've thought about this and gone, okay, let's let's approach these perfumers and ask them your original one that you made for us. Do you think it would work as you know a stronger concentration? So, and I think if they said no, they genuinely probably wouldn't wouldn't go. Oh, let's get someone else to make it. Uh, they they wouldn't do it. So something's been sort of nagging at the back of my pea-sized brain about this, and and I'm I'm wondering, you know, are these perfumes then we think redeveloped in order to meet the sort of updated brief, or is it literally they just cob twice as much fucking perfume oil into the mix and reduce the you, you alcohol? You can't really do that. Mm. You can't really do that. You have to go almost back to sort of basics. But if you originally compounded the the original formula it'll be a lot easier to know how to do that mm. um which is why you can't just go yeah let's take exact in some cases you might be able to do that but you have to think about if you were already on the cusp of like using too much of a certain material you know just from restrictions wise or right. budget budget wise or any kind of thing you have to think about it in terms of how do i make this uh, uh you know uh, uh, into a different yeah that that's why they come across differently <laughs> you know what mm. i mean because they are a slightly different thing but i think what's amazing about these is that they are remarkably similar they they still they they're faithful is is the word isn't it really mm. they're faithful to the originals but they bring something new to the table and that's obviously what amouage wanted to do and that's why i genuinely think the relationship with the perfumers if the perfumers didn't think they could do something that was worthwhile, I don't think we'd we'd necessarily have these, you know. So maybe that's the, maybe that's the case for some of the other ones. I don't know. Like I say, this is just completely like me just fucking making this up. I don't know, but um, I'd like to think that that's the case, you know. Mm. It is interesting. I, what my thought was was about uh, you know, in terms of being. I for a compliant, you know, how far can they push it? That must mm-hmm, be mm-hmm. such a consideration yeah. in terms of, I guess, even how concentrated. So, like you said, they're all slightly different. They've all got these different numbers, but then there's there is that element of, you know, what, what would it be if it was on a woman forty four? Then what would happen? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of concluding thoughts on on the collection overall. Uh, I mean, it feels like the collection you never knew you needed, uh, but yet there seems to be something uh, that all of us want from it. So, um, all right, Ben, overall, what was your take? Yeah, I think that's a really good way of putting it. Actually, isn't it? In that, it's sort of, and going off James saying how they're faithful as well. It's like, hmm. you know, the interlude in it was for me like the most unremarkable and the most underwhelming but that's because i've i you know i knew exactly what to expect and but that's that feels like almost wrong to sort of class that as a negative against it do you know what i mean because it was still fucking fantastic i think they're all brilliant and i think they're all the very best versions of the of what they are like it's, it's by far mm. the the best version of Interlude, although saying that I do like the Black Iris, but I still think it's a mm. better perfume, if you like. It's not my favourite version, but I think it's a better version. Um, but at the same time, it's like, Jesus, do I really need that? And then you smell it and you go, yeah, I do. Like, like as, Yeah, I need yeah, it. <laughs> so I, and I think we've probably all said that now. Like, um, but, that, but that's exactly what it does to you, but, isn't it? You think, uh, oh, I don't need this. It's... it's, it's uh, redundant you know I, I've, I've already got that version or whatever but then you smell it and it just is better there is more depth to all of it. do them. you think 400 quid is too much though <sighs> i mean 375 surely 
This oh, one is uh, three hundred ninety-five. I mean, amorous is expensive anyway. I mean, how much is a bottle of like interlude? That isn't interlude fifty three. It's still fucking expensive. Yeah, they're, they're about two hundred and fifty like, quid, I think. Uh, you, you... Exactly. If you're spending two fifty, why not spend three seventy five? That's that would be my view. But as you always say, you don't pay retail, and you can find a lot of those amouages on mm. uh, discount sites. That's true. For a hell of a lot less than that. I mean, I think that yeah. a lot of those like hundred mils are less than two hundred quid <laughs> easily. Like mm. you know, they might be hundred and fifty quid, let's say, which to me is much more like reasonable. Again. I'm not saying anything because clearly they've redeveloped these and uh, they've, you know, literally you are getting more for your money because you're getting more of the, the the real meat and potatoes, the the, the actual raw materials. So uh, you can't necessarily, you know, argue with that. And when they freshen things up like that, because these aren't on, you know, those like other retailers now are they like the discount so, some of them sure. are yeah no, they, oh, they are, are they? yeah right. some of them starting to show up there now and and certainly they will in 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 the fullness of time they'll be more prevalent right. there but it, you know and and quite a lot of them are showing up with kind of like um on on discounter sites uh at rrp who are then running like 20 percent off across the site promotions at, at mm. you know different right. points so you can definitely get them for less i mean uh, I, I I do consider, and and you know, I, I'm I, my 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 sort of value proposition, my value sort of assessment for perfumes, all out of fucking whack, right? But I do consider the fact that for for these something like Interlude, you're basically getting a hundred mil for what Roger Dove would charge for fifty mil, um, and um, you know, uh, I. I'm not going to say anything bad about Roger Dove perfumes because I love all the ones that I own. But you know, does Amouage uh, don't seem to be the ones that are fucking uh, you know right up at the top of the pricing tree, even with even no. with these extract ones. And, and for what I would, I mean, I don't really know that much about the house, like I keep saying, but from my experience with these testers, is you don't need much, and hmm. they all last all day so like i'm quite happy i'm quite happy to spend you know 20 quid on a paul smith rose and i will spritz that every three hours you know and Mm. i a lot you know take doesn't take me long probably get through about three or four mil a day easy Mm. if i'm wearing that one this i mean i made that tester i I wore it three days in a row and there's there's still some left for tonight and that's a two mil sample yeah and there's still a little bit left so you know and I'm an oversprayer think, anyway, but mm. yeah, that they you could if you if you're thinking of in terms of price per wear, which I often do, these mm. really they potentially really good value actually in comparison to other things. It, yeah, I mean, it was quite vulgar of me to sort of bring up like money because uh, you know. No, I think that's really important. important. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think like the way I always try and look at stuff like that when you when you're sort of like think. You're looking at expensive stuff like that. You think, especially when there's like two versions of it, you always think like, how much extra am I really getting yeah. for the extra money, right? And and is it is that worth it? And I think, I think in this, if I bought the cheaper version, I would feel like I'm missing out from these. These, I think I had worth exactly this conversation I, with um, my friend. Who I do sent feel me like the... I would feel like I'd bought a compromise yeah. to be hmm. to save money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know? And and I think that sort of sums it up for yeah, me. Yeah, Terry, you sent me the, the decant of Epic 56 last week. I said to him, you know, there's a big price difference between just Epic Women and this. And he said, if you bought the Epic Women for this, you would be disappointed in comparison. Don't. Mm. He said, just wait, just wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I th- what? think that's fair. Um, so, um, Ben, any final thoughts from you? No, not really, other than that, yeah, I think... Um, they were really good, but then I kind of expected it because I kind of like Amourage as a house. I think they're bloody brilliant. Um, mm. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that no, was good to get to try them anyway because, yeah, I thought they were all fucking great, exceptional, good good choice of words for the for the uh, collection. Excellent. Mm. Okay, Fliss? Uh, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed smelling them. Like I said, I don't really uh, have a huge uh, amount of knowledge about Amourage, but the stuff that I have smell i've really enjoyed and that this was no exception apart from maybe honor but there we go mm. okay and james 
Uh, yeah, that's it. I thought they were great um, on the whole. Uh, like I say, the Honor one is not really my bag, but I completely respect it as a really good perfume. The other three, yeah, are all really excellent. Uh, the Epic was just my favourite. Mm. Um, but I think as a thing, uh, they are... It was a good idea on the whole, you know, mm. for me. Uh, at first I was a bit like, all right, okay, you know, a bit like people, you know, being sceptical about them having flankers or trying to sort of... Uh, I don't know. It was felt like, oh, have you, have you, have you, are you not very imaginative anymore? Well, no, because they're still releasing loads of new perfumes as mm. well. But they're just doing this. Almost, this is almost like a gift to the fans. This is almost like giving back to people going, hey, remember all those ones that you really liked? We've got them fucking really full on versions of them. So, you know, good for Amouage. Uh, I really enjoyed them. Uh, and yeah, I thought they were great. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think it, it was not a particularly obvious thing to have done. Um, I, I think, you know, uh, it, it's it's reasonably obvious, I guess, to sort of uh, take over a house and say, hey, what have been the big hits? Let's go digging back through the crates and see what we can do in terms of flankers. But these aren't really flankers. These are sort of like a full fucking reworking of the originals, but amped mm-hmm. up. And, and I think that is... It's not obvious, and I think there was a lot of scepticism. You know, I count myself amongst them. It was like, well, why the fuck would I need this? They're already all fucking strong as balls, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And yet they work, Um, and and I think that's great. And and that to me shows that they've got kind of uh, you know vision and imagination beyond you know what I would just sort of go, okay, yeah, no, let's move on. You know, Mm -hmm. history is history. Let's move on with new stuff. Um, so yeah, well done. Um, and as I say, it's the uh, it's the sort of collection you never knew you needed. Um, it's the good remake. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like it's like the good part of remakes. Like when you see Hollywood churn out another shite remake, it's not that. It's a good mm. one. Yeah, yeah. It's, well done. It's like a Red Red Dragon. Do you know that movie? Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you, uh, you know the original one? Uh, Ma- is it Manhunter? Man- Manhunter? Yeah, which was uh, uh, Michael Mann. Uh, yeah, like version which was like it's just great if you watch it it is um and yeah but it's just totally different style but like they made a remake and it's it's better yeah but But, i mean you know not it doesn't take anything away from the originals the originals were all good and these are all better well done Mm -hmm. yeah so anyway good Uh, i very much enjoyed it as always um just a quick note of thanks to uh Mark, uh, Renault, and Andras at uh, Amouage for sorting out these samples. It is much appreciated. Um, and uh, a quick note for One Star Steve. Hopefully, Steve, you've been happy with the episode, but do get in touch to let us know because um, we fully give a fuck. Um, so uh, if other people have got opinions they'd like to share about the show, please do get in touch. James would love to have a voice note from you. I personally <laughs> i personally do not want a voice note from you not, not if you're gonna be nasty about it um we will be back uh, in two weeks uh, with subjects as yet unspecified until then uh, from me and the gang we wish you a very good week and uh, see you next time on les odorants bye bye bye, bye. <laughs>